on the Bevel East Broadcast Network. Lancer Baseball is on the air. Swing and a miss! He struck him out. It's a combined no-hitter for Bevel East. Pasquale rounded third. Here comes a play at the plate. Save! Dean Pasquale scores! Two-run triple by Tyreka. And the Lancers have regained the lead. Four to three in the sixth. Now it's time for the Lancer Baseball pregame show. And we welcome you into our Lancer Baseball pregame show as the Lancers today are going to play two with the Senators of Springfield. I'm Steven Stock. We've got to have you along on our Lancer Baseball pregame show. Two games yesterday and a tough loss for softball and a softball doubleheader sweep against a very good Carterville Lions team. They were very, very good. 5 0 in the final of the first game and 7 0 in the final of the second game. But Bevel East do have some good news to report. They were able to make it three straight wins. Yesterday, as they were on the road and took on Granite City in a 1 nothing win. So now they try to make it 4 and 5 straight today if they can get it done against the Senators of Springfield coming in with a record of 4 and 1. Lancers are now 3 and 4. They've won three straight. Those three wins against Cary Grove in Marion, Illinois on Tuesday, and then Oakville, Missouri on Wednesday, and then obviously Granite City on yesterday. And that 1 nothing win for the Lancers against Granite City yesterday. RBI was scored by Jalen Jones in the seventh inning. Nothing, nothing ball game going in the seventh. And finally, the Lancers get a run on an RBI by Jalen Jones. He's in the ninth spot today, the starting center fielder for Bevel East. On the mound, Luke Monroe, Brody Lindemann, and Dawson Vernier combined for a complete game shutout. The three go very well. Stellar pitch and performance by them. And they get the win to get to three and four. Over to the Senators. This is a team that actually was the state champions in 2021 for IHSA Class 3A. Last year they went 25 and 10. They finished second in conference play going 14 and four, pretty good conference record. That got them, got them the two seed in the playoffs, won their first game in the regional semifinal, but then lost to four seeded Rochester in the regional championship, losing three to nothing. So that ended their season last year. They're a team that does play a good number of 6-1-8 opponents. Uh, last year, uh, last Yes, last year was their last game against a 6-1-8 opponent. They took on Edwardsville at Edwardsville on May 20th, 2023 in an 11-1 loss in a run rule game in favor of the Tigers of Edwardsville. They've played 16 games against 6-1-8 opponents in the last five years. It's minus the COVID season, so you can say six years if you want to go year by year, but the last five seasons, really. They're 6-10 and ten in that span. They've played Granite City. They're going to play them twice later on. They also play Edwardsville once later in the year. Bevel East against Springfield in history are four and one against the Senators. They've played them in the playoffs a few years ago. They have, they've recently been playing them in double headers. They played them in a double header last year up in Springfield, got the sweep. They're four and one against them. The last loss came on April 13th of 2021 at Springfield, where the Senators walked off the Lancers six to five. The last time they lost to Springfield. Bevel East, look at them at three and four. This is the last time they were one game under. 500 in a season was April 22nd, 2021, where they lost to Nashville in an 8-6 loss. They became 4-5 and five on the year. Last time they were at 500 was March 18th, 2022. was 5-2 to two loss to Juliet West, which made the Lancers 1-1. One one. Last time they were one game above 500 besides starting the year 1-0 and oh, was March 22nd, 2023, where they lost to Mascuda in their home opener last year. That made the Lancers 2-1 and one on the year. So Beverly's trying to get to 500, try to make it four straight, and if they can do that, they can get to over 500 with the win in game two. But Springfield has some pretty good hitters in their lineup, and one of their big guys to watch out for is number one, Seth Imp Impson, a senior who is currently on the year batting 455, no homers, five RBIs. He has a 600 OBP and 818 slugging with a 14 OPS. Another guy to watch out for is a junior in Arthur Davison, who's also high, high OBP at 625 and a 500 slugging with a 11,000 OPS. Another guy to watch out for one more is another senior is Carter Cruz, who is batted 556, no homers, five RBIs, 
Cruz also has a 6.43 OBP and a 5.55 slugging with a 1,200 OPS almost. Springfield, very good team. It's going to be tough for Beville East to fight off the centers pitching-wise. Go, Beville East is going to go to the left-hander, Logan Faust, the junior. Got to see how he can do a solid outing against Juliet West to start off the year. I thought he pitched very solid in that game, and we'll see how he does today for Beville East and who he's going to be backed up by as Beville East pitching was great. Over this week, I mean, they started off great against Cary Grove, pitching a shutout, and then also Oakville only giving up one run. That run was unearned from Tommy Kromkowski on the mound Wednesday and then pitching a shot yesterday by Monroe, Lindemann, and Grenier. Anyway, let's continue off the Lancer baseball pregame show. Let's go to our postgame from Wednesday. I heard from Coach Wiggs talking about that win against the Tigers on Wednesday and get you ready here for Saturday in this doubleheader game against Springfield. So here's Coach Wiggs from Wednesday. There he is, Coach Wick. How, Thanks you doing, for how are you doing? Oh, doing great. Doing great. Well, I, I mean, how does it feel? I mean, you guys now, a little bit of a rough start, you know, but two wins last day has got to feel pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I just got done talking to him in the clubhouse there. We've played six games, and, man, about all six of them have been kind of playoff-type atmospheres yeah. against good opponents, and all of them outside of the slew game have been, you know, close games yeah. at the end, and this was no different. But – I tell them if we make winning plays, then we come out on the right side of these close games. Yeah. If we don't, if the other team makes winning plays, then we come out on the wrong side of them. Today we made a, a lot of winning plays. And you look at the schedule. I know you just mentioned it. It's tough games. You guys had to play Julia West, a good team. At Normals definitely ranked in the state. Mm -hmm. And then you go last week with Scooter's pretty good, obviously, Slew High. Or that they're very good. Oakville's another good team. I mean, these games you know, are huge against good opponents. Gets you that experience. Gets you ready for the playoffs and Absolutely. Southwestern Conference play. Yep, I, I I like to schedule tough early because it gets you ready for conference play. It gets you ready for the playoffs. That guy that started on the mound was a was a top tier he pitcher. Was. He's an SEC pitcher. So um, that you know we we fought and battled and then we kind of got to the second guy and, and scored a couple runs, made some stuff happen. Let's talk about your guys' pitching though. Tommy was very well out that one run and it Hodap comes in. He allows a few base runners. But he did a good job getting out of it and didn't allow anything. They both pitched great. Um, Tommy only got in the jam in like the second, I think. He walked a few guys. Yep. But he worked out of that uh, and then you know had a great third inning uh right after that uh and or sorry great fourth inning you went one struck out the side in the third, third yep and then uh then hodap came in and obviously we got a little tight at the end there but he pitched great at the end look at the offense you getting talked about winning plays that winning play you know brody lindemann is the first one in the fourth inning freshman huge spot comes through this hits up the middle ties the game brody brody's been a good player for us uh at the plate behind the plate in the field on the mound he pitched yesterday uh, he's he's been a he's been a good addition to the program obviously this year. Look at the sixth inning. He kind of played you know a little small ball trying to get runners on, move them, advance them, and then you put the ball on play. And you always talk right. about good things happen when you put the ball in play, right. and it happened, leading to two runs. It sure did. You know the ball back to the pitcher. They got confused on the force out versus yep. the tag play. Uh, you know, but if we strike out, we don't have that chance. You know, yes. we, we you know Noah put the ball in play, coming cold off the bench, comes in, has a good at bat, hits the ball. Uh, Kale Briscoe sit on the bench, comes in cold off the bench, hits a grounder, turns into two runs for us. So now two wins for you guys. What are you looking to see on Friday and this weekend trying to continue and just trying to get better? Yeah, consistency, winning plays, honestly. That's that's kind of our, our mantra right now is to, to make sure we are making winning plays over and over. Well, head coach Ryan Wicks, thanks for taking Thank the time to join me. Congrats on the Appreciate win. it. Appreciate right it. right back here. Welcome back into our Lancer Baseball pregame show. It's Coach Wicks from Wednesday. As the Lancers have made it three straight wins, a one nothing win against the Warriors of Granite City yesterday, trying to make it four straight, get to 500. Springfield's off to a good start at 4-1. This, this for Bubble East will be really the last non-conference week. They still have some non-conference games sprinkle in, but they'll begin their real conference season next week. It'll be Bevel West to open things up on the road Tuesday and then return game Thursday at home for Bevel East. Bevel West has been pretty good at Round the record of five and one, they've won out some wins, some non-conference wins, uh, playing pretty well. They, and they've won, I believe, five straight because they started off the year playing Plainfield North, a team we saw that Saturday opening weekend here in that triple header, and they beat Belva West, and they were pretty pretty good. So uh, that's a look at Belva East. They'll be trying to get to win number four against Springfield, a team they've done well against again over the last year. As I mentioned, a five and one record against them head-to-head -head and only one loss coming back in 2021. Anyway, getting closer and closer to first pitch. We'll take it our short break and get you ready for that with the lineups in our first pitch next year on the Bell East Broadcast Network.
Welcome back to his soccer. The Logan Faust to start today for Beverly East. He's finishing up his warm-up pitches. The left-hander goes for Beverly East here in game one. He's making his third appearance on the season, coming in a record of 0-0. He's pitched in four innings, giving up six runs all earned. That's good for a 10.50 ERA. He's given up five hits in those innings. And looking at his strikeout numbers, he has three strikeouts in those four innings pitched compared to six walks, a 5.25 Ks per seven, and a 2.75 whip for the left-hander. Hitters are hitting 294 against him with a 478 OBP and a 294 slugging. No hit by pitches for Logan Faust. He is the left-hander for Beverly. He's backing him up in the defense. So let's get the defensive lineman. We'll start off in the outfield for you. Going left to right. Over on the left is Naz Fares in center is a junior Jalen Jones. Over on right, the senior Tyreka. Going in the infield from third to first, the freshman Brody Lineman at shore on the left side. Junior Tommy Kromkowski. At second, it's another junior, Owen Hodap, after he pitched in relief on Wednesday against Oakville and over at first, wrapping out the junior, Caden Kagas. Behind the plate, doing the catch today for Beville East is the junior, Noah Peters, and he will be catching Logan Faust. Our first pitch is coming up at 10.59 a.m., and it's a first pitch strike from Logan Faust, a runner away here in game one of this doubleheader, facing the left-hander in the short, sorry, right-hander in the shortstop in Brody Scheffler. 0-1 pitch is popped up in the left field. And the left fielder is under making the play it is Fares, who I had thought had a great game Wednesday against Oakville. Makes the catch, two pitches, one out. Quick start for Faust, and he'll bring in the right fielder, Carter Cruz, one of the seniors on this Springfield team. And you look at it, they were freshmen when they won the state title back in 2021. There's a strike 0 and 1 from Faust, so he's throwing strikes. First three pitches all in there. Cruz, one of the good hitters on this baseball team for Springfield. 556 average. Hits one up the middle. Second baseman Hodap fields at the junior. Fires to first. Making the play is Kagus with the catch. Out number two. Four pitches, two outs. And how about this weak contact from Faust? Just getting the hitters to roll over on that one was Cruz. One, now we got to watch out for the middle of the order. It's their first baseman, Seth Impson, who the other senior on this team. Hitting very well. One of the guys we talked about on the pregame batting over 600. Takes a strike going one. Five pitches by Faust. All strikes here to start off a Saturday morning. That ball's hit up the middle. Shortstop Kromkowski can't make the play as he was trying to pick it up and gather and lost the ball. Gets behind him and it's going to be an error. And E6 will put... Impson on with two outs, and Faust was about to go six pitches, three outs. Faust was looking for a one, two, three start, but with two outs, let's see if Springfield, let's we'll see what they can do with the air. It'll bring in the starter, Ethan Rutter. Four hitter in the lineup today for the Senators. Game one, swaying and a miss, 0-1. And a doubleheader yesterday with softball losing 5 nothing and 7 nothing to a very good Carterville team. So we'll see if the Lancers can get back in the winning ways here for baseball. End up spring break with two wins. That's high 1-1. One one. Boys volleyball last game was thir thir yeah, Thursday against Collinsville, a two-set win. We had that for you. And we'll be having those. They'll have volleyball Monday and Friday, Father McGivney and Chaminade. And then softball Tuesday against O'Fallon. They will, the girls will play their third conference game going 2-0 to start. Brings back a bunt going for second. No one covering. And as coming in slide, it was Hodap to make sure that ball does not get past him. It's a stolen base. And a 2-1 count. Springfield an opportunity to take an early 1-0 lead here in the top of the first. Four batters in after a two-out error has put Empson on. And there's a little bit of a lead, and the throw to second is going to be a little bit late as Emerson was almost halfway between second and third, and Faust gets it in there just a little bit late. And we'll go back to a 2-1 count. Rudder batting the pitch. Misses low, 3-1. You go back to the first game in Faust at the 
start of the season. That was the first game for Pebble East as well. He came in against Julian West, backing up Vernier and Monroe, and he went two and one-thirds. And the problem was he gave up the long ball. That was the one problem. But the other thing was that long ball was a two-run homer because of a walk, and he had four walks in his first outing and two and one-thirds. That ball's popped up behind the plate. Peters will have to let that one go as it goes out of play, and Faust has got this count full three and two, and he'll look for out number three, hopefully via the K, if he can get it. Pitched four and in so far on the year. One and two-thirds is the other outing from him, and in that span, only three strikeouts, so he had one in Juliet West and two in the other outing. The left-hander, 3-2, comes home and fires. Runners off for third. It's a nice breaking ball, and he throws runner for out number three. He picks up a K, and the Lancers are the bat. After no hits, no walks, no runs, one air, one left. We're going to the bottom of the first. The Lancers are back for the first time today. It's nothing, nothing. Good start for Logan Faust on the mound after a two-out error, able to get a strikeout in the top of the first. No run scored after an opportunity for Springfield. And for Pavelis, this is how they're lining up today against the right-hander for Springfield. This is Coach Wiggs' lineup. Two, Leading off, it's Tommy Kremkowski at short bat in second, the senior Tyreka. In the three spot, the junior, Kenan Kakis in the cleanup spot. Naz Ferzor in left, bat in fifth. It's Brody Lindeman bat in sixth. The catcher, Noah Peters, the junior, Owen Hodap follows. Bat in eighth is the starter, Logan Faust. And wrapping things down the ninth spot is the junior center fielder, Jalen Jones. Lancers are going against a right-hander for Springfield and Ethan Rudder. Rudder is making his second appearance on the season. Actually, fourth appearance on the season. He's 1-0 and on the year. As the first pitch in there for a strike to Kremkowski. This is his fourth appearance. is a 3.50 ERA. He's 1-0 on the year. That's a swing and a miss. 0-2 to Kremkowski. Rudder is pitched in eight innings. He's given up eight hits, four runs, all earned. Six walks, so high walks, nine strikeouts. He's given up three doubles and a triple. The 0-2 to Tommy. Swing and a miss outside, 1-2. and two. Kremkowski. Now, after Friday's game, is batting 292, creeping up to 300. Been creep, creeped around there a lot last year as well. That's a strike three call to Kromkowski's down looking for out number one. Only took four pitches. Batting second, number 23, Ty Reaper. So Rudder picks up his first K against Bevel East. It's Kromkowski looking, and he'll bring in the senior right fielder left-handed bat in Ty Rica. Ty recently pitched on Tuesday against Kerry Grove, a non-conference play, and did pretty well in that game. And Ty now owning a 3.11 ERA. First pitch, a ball, 1-0. Pitch misses, 2-0. Two 2-0 to Ty. That's fouled off, 2-1. Ty on the year coming in batting 333s. Got a good average. 333, 391 OBP, 381 slugging. 
highest average on the team. Now homers one RBI. Two one to tie. Takes a good pitch in the dirt. Three and one. It's like a one out walk and see if next few guys in Kegas can get something going or Fairs who was huge in the win on Wednesday against Oakville. Three one Rika. Hits it, fouls it, bangs off of Rika. Full count now. Butter struck out Kromkowski on four pitches. Full count to Rika, the pitch. Fouls that one back, another payoff pitch coming to the left handed batter. Springfield 4 and 1, Lancers 3 and 4. Started off 0 and 4. And not the start you wanted. Julia West was a 5 to 2 loss, and Normal's a 2 0 loss in games that you feel like were very winnable for Beville East. And then 1 0 loss to Mascuda. Ty takes ball 4, low and inside. The Lancers have their first base run of the day. The 1 out walk to Rico. So bringing the first baseman for the Lancers with 1 on 1 out in Kegis. That in 158, 238 OBP, 211 slugging, no homers, two RBIs. One on, one out. The pitch to Kagus is can't be handled by the catcher. He doesn't know where it's at, and the pitcher runner has to come over and help. Is finally the catcher for Springfield no, gets to it, which is Hardy, and Ty will take a base on that. So the Lancers have a runner in scored position. Only one out and a one out count on Kegis. And we'll see what Beverly's could do with it here as Springfield had an opportunity in the top of the first with two outs and could not bring him home. It's in the dirt and a wild pitch and catcher didn't know where it went. Kegis hits to the left side. Shortstop is there. He's going to hold Rika at a second. And Kegis, the throw is off of first. And they're going to say he tagged his back for out number two. And Rika stayed put at second. Good play by the first baseman with the Tough throw to get him out. Batting fourth, left fielder, John Ferris. So Ty stayed put at second. Now it's up to the cleanup hitter. And Naz Fares takes a slider in there for a strike going one. Naz is a sophomore playing in. Left field here for game one. Takes a pitch for a ball one and one. Naz is currently on the year batting at 250, two for eight with two walks. No homers, no RBI, so look for that first varsity RBI here. Gets a good pitch to hit, fouls it off one and two. Springfield in the top of the second will have that 5-6-7 part of the order in the D.H. Lucas Richardson, June Mato, and Sam Hardy. It's the D.H. center fielder and catcher. One and two, the pitch. Swing and a miss. It's in the dirt for a drop third strike. The throw from Hardy to first base, and Fares is retired on a drop third strike after a walk, no hits, no runs, no errors, one left. We've played one from Bevel East, no score. We'll be right back on the Bevel East Broadcast Network.
Welcome back here to Lancer Stadium. One in and three with no score. Both teams with a runner at second base in their innings, but unable to bring them home. And that brings us to a nothing nothing score to the second inning. Logan Faust back out for another inning of work. Had a very good first inning. He even had six pitches for three outs, but it ended up the sixth pitch was an error, but he worked out of it, getting a Called third strike for out number three in his first strikeout of the day. Now he faces the DH for Springfield, which is the batter number 21, Lucas Richardson, who fouls that one off. And Faust has already had 0-2. He did not throw many balls with a full count to the hitter and runner, which was the last out. Those are the only three balls he threw in the inning. Already had 0-2. The pitch to the right-handed batter, Richardson. There it is. There's another one, a breaking ball. For strike three and out number one, back-to-back -back K's for fouls, going back to the top of the first. Another beautiful pitch. Number 21, Jude Domino. First pitch from Faust, the next batter, Jude Alonso, the center fielder. First pitch misses. 1-0, oh. next one coming from Faust. This the first two, 2-0. Two oh. Back-to-back K's, Rudder down looking on a breaking ball and then getting Richardson looking on a curve. That one misses from Faust. So after getting Richardson down on three strikes, he's thrown three straight. There's a strike. Three and one, and finally gets one over. And he will miss that one in the dirt. A one out walk to the second base runner by Springfield. And we'll bring in Sam Hardy, the catcher. Catcher, Sam so Hardy. That one out. Hartzell, a senior, another one of these seniors on this Springfield team. They have a few, but not many. It's more of juniors. That's hit to the right side, pokes it for a base hit. And Springfield have two on, one out. Holding at second, and a throw is over to Tommy Kripkowski's head, but backing up is the third baseman, Lindemann. So base hit, and Springfield's got back-to-back -back runners on. It's two on, one out. Trouble for Faust. We'll bring in the eighth hitter, Arthur Davis, in the second baseman. One of those guys I told you about in the pregame that can hit 250 on the season. That's the average, but the OBP is very high at 625. He can find a way to get on base. It's that one. Down the left field line, fairs in foul territory. Try to make a play, and he'll just let that one go as it goes over the fence and out of play 0-1. For Davison on the year, sitting at two RBIs. No homers, two RBIs. Trying to see if he can get it to three here. Strike out to start the inning and a walk and a hit. First hit of the game. Came from Hartzell, the catcher. His foul steps off. pitch. There it is. Faust gets it in there. 0-2 oh trying to pick up K number 3 and more importantly though out number 2. Faust would like to get these last two guys in the bottom of the order. Davidson and Sturm and not face the top of the order with runners on. The 0-2. Oh Just missed. 1-2. and two. Looking at the runner at second, that is Omoto, and then at first is Hartle, the pitch. That's in the dirt, two and two now. Got to give him a chase at that one, but not swinging as Davison. Davison has only struck out two times 
through the first five games. 2-2. Two -two. Hit to the right side. Cake is trying to run and make a play, but it's going to land right in front of the bubble. He's dug out, so another 2-2 two -two coming. It's a battle between these two. two. Two on, one out in the second. No score. Lancers had a one-out walk by Rika. Got to second on a wild pitch, but was shredded there after a ground out and a strikeout. The pitch inside, and it's Ran full on the right-handed batter. Second baseman as for Springfield as a 3-2 count. Waiting on deck is the ninth hitter. Jeffrey Sturm, a junior. Pitch. Ball four low, and Faust is loading them up. Two walks and a hit. All loaded up, and Bavelis needs to find a way to prevent a run from coming home. Sturm is up the left fielder, ninth hitter in the lineup. First pitch to him from Faust. There is a strike going one. Sturm on the year is batting 333. This is only through four plate appearances. He's one for three at the walk. Hits that. In a left center. Will it stay up enough? And it's going to get down for a base hit. It's going to drop. One run will score. And Jones gets to it in time and fires it in quickly to hold the runner at third, which is Hartle. But it doesn't matter. Springfield's on the board first. one nothing on an RBI single here in the second by Jeffrey Sturm. So Faust has allowed four straight base runners. And Springfield leads one nothing here in the second. In and what it looked like to be a good start. It was a strikeout on three pitches by Faust, and then he's walked the next guy on five pitches, and then he gave up a hit. That ball's drilled to left field. Going back a few steps is Fares. He's under it, makes the play. Tagging from third is Hartle, and the throw into third as Hartle will score. Holding up at second is Davidson, and Springfield's made it a 2 0 game on the RBI sack fly by the leadoff hitter and Brody Scheffler. He's hit the ball both times to Fares in his two at-bats, and that one brings a run home. So two on, two out. Two-nothing ball game. We'll see if Springfield are trying to get some more with two outs. It'll bring in the right fielder in Carter Cruz. 0-1 as he grounded out to Hodap at second. His first time up back in the first. Walk, hit. Walk and then a RBI single in the left center. Sack flies, made it two. And a one, Faust. Swing and a miss, good breaking ball, 0 and 2. Lancers in the bottom of the second will have their 5 6 7 for the order due up, which will be the freshman Brody Lindemann, followed by the junior Noah Peters, followed by another junior in Owen Hodap. Anybody gets on, it'll be Fal uh, Logan Faust. Time called by. Cruz. It's a ground ball to third. Let him in. Fires to first. He's got him. And Fulligan Faust gets out of it with a ground out to third. After two walks, two hits, a sack fly, no errors, two left. Springfield's made it a 2 0 ball game. We've played one and a half from Pebble East, Lancers to Pat. This is Lancer Baseball on the Pebble Broadcast Network.
Three field played at two in the top of the second. An RBI single by Jeffrey Sturm, and then a RBI sack fly by Brody Scheffler with the bases loaded. Have made it 2 nothing. Lancers trying to respond. They're going to start off with the five hitter, the freshman third base, bound him on Wednesday for our post game. And Brody Lindemann, one of our players of the games, who had his first varsity RBI on Wednesday against Oakville. Tied the game up in the bottom of the fourth. Fouled off the first one, takes the pitch for a ball, one and one. Lindemann on the year now through his first seven of the season. Batting 250, 3 for 12, 400 OBP, 250 slugging, three walks in there with no homers, now one RBI. That pitch was inside, and I'm going to say Lindemann swung one and two. Lindemann, Peters, and Hodap do up for Beville East. Five, six, seven, already down by two, but Beville East was down by one early in Stokeville. It was Kromkowski who had a workout of a Bases loaded jam in the third second inning against Oakville and walked three batters and in the third inning gave up a RBI triple that made it one nothing. That ball's hit up the middle. That ball second baseman fields it, fires to first, and he's got him in time. Lindemann is retired. Great play by the second baseman in Arthur Davison. So Lindemann retired after five pitches. Try to hit that up the middle, but Davison there, and with one out, it'll bring in the junior catcher, Noah Peters. Peters is one for 15, popping that one up in the right. Coming in, it's the right fielder making the play. Peters retired two away, two quick outs. It's like one pitch, two outs, and it'll bring in Owen Hodap, the second baseman today. Pitched on Wednesday against Oakville. Still looking for his first hit of the year. He's 0 for 4 with a walk. Pitch was low, 1 and 0. Springfield in the top of the third will be a good part of the order for them. 3 4 5. Seth Imson, Ethan Rudder, and the DH, Lucas Richardson. Two and out, that one missed to Hodap. Lancers only one base runner through the first six guys up. It was a Rico one out walk. But that fouls that one off down the third baseline, two and one. So now back two and two. Two. Oh, that takes a ball three and two. So it goes 2-0. Two, oh. two, two now, three, two. Full count. Two out on deck for Pebble East is Logan Faust. Full count pitch to Hodap. Takes ball four. Second walk. Second base runner. Allowed by Rudder. The Lancers have a two-out base runner. We'll see if they can make Rudder's two-out walk come back to bite them. And they'll bring in the starting pitcher today, Logan Faust, to try to help his cause here. Faust is 0 for 2 on the season. Only his third at bat. Also struck out both times up. And those two at bats. First one missed, one and zero. Oh. Faust, the eighth hitter in the lineup, trying to see what he can do with two outs after a two out walk. As Hodap gets on for the second time this season, his second walk. Swing and a miss, one and one from Rudder. Rudder's a guy that's going to walk a few, but he also could strike out some guys. He Struck out two Lancers in the first. Kromkowski looking and then Fair swinging. 1-1. One, one. Tie 2-1. Two and one. Two 
Takes a strike, he went up 2-2. Two -two. Zoo. Strike three call to the outside part. Faust is down looking at Rudder's third K through two after a walk. No hits, no runs, no errors. One left. We've played two from Lancer Stadium. Springfield leads to nothing to game one. On to the third, this is Lancer Baseball on the Bell East Broadcast Network. And welcome back here to Bubble East. Two minutes through in this game. One of a doubleheader between the Senators of Springfield and the Lancers of Bubble East. The Senators hold on away 2 nothing lead through two as we begin the top of the third. Steven Chocolate here with you. Glad to have you along on a Saturday morning slash afternoon. And Logan Faust is through two. And he starts the third throwing a strike to the three hitter of the lineup in Seth Empson who reached on an air first time up. And he fouls that one off. And it's 0-2 quickly. Faust got ahead early. To start off the top of the second, it was a three-pitch strikeout. And then after that, he allowed four straight base runners to reach. That's fouled back 0-2. At least three and four, trying to make it four straight wins. They've won three straight in non-conference play against Cary Grove, Oakville, and then Granite City. Springfield is 4-1 to start their season. It's outside, missing one and two. Lancers trying to get to 500. The last time they were one game under 500 this season was April 22nd of 2021. 8-6 loss to Nashville made them under 500 to 4-5. and five. As Logan Faust, good breaking ball, swing and a miss. He's got Kane number three. He's got that pitch working today for out number one. Yeah, his first two strikeouts were looking, but this time gets one chasing. So a good start, four-pitch strikeout for Faust. He'll face now in the starter today, Ethan Rudder, facing his counterpart, hits in the left field for a base hit, and he is on as he avenge a first-inning strikeout. He was the last out of the first. It's a base hit here with one out. So Faust with some trouble again. He has a lot of base runner now in every inning with one out, he'll face the D.H. Lucas Richardson. He got him looking on three pitches to start that second inning. Faces him here. Throws bunt. Brings it back. A ball, 1-0. and oh. Last time Beverly's got to the 500 mark in a season was March 18, 2022. A 5-2 loss in their second game of the season to Julia West. Made him 1-1. One one. That ball's hit to the shortstop. Kremkowski popped up in the air, and he's got it. Makes the catch for out number two. Quick work of Richardson. Romanato will step in now. He got a walk. That was the starter. That everything started everything off last inning for Springfield. I was trying to strain that runner at first, and he's got two outs, a strikeout, and a pop out. 
here in this third. First pitch from the left-hander. Oh, and one, a good pitch. Double East can win today in this first game and win the second game. As they win here, they get to 500. They'll try to get to one game above 500. In game two, the last time they were one game above 500 besides starting the year 1-0. and This last season, they were 2-0 and and lost to Mascuda. In their home opener, 2-1, to one, that made them 2-1. and 0-2, oh Faust looking for K number four of the day, and he's got it, a swing and a miss. Faust two Ks in the inning. After one hit, no runs, no errors. One hit, none left. We've played two and a half through, sorry, one, one stranded. We've played two and a half here from Beverly Senators two, Lancers to bat. This is Lancer Baseball on the Beverly Broadcast Network. Playing the bottom of the third here, 2 0 Springfield. Beverly East to bat for the third time. Trailing 2 0. As we play here in the bottom of the third on the scoreboard and runs, hits, and airs for the visitors and the Senators. 2 3 0 for Beverly East. Triple zeros. That might change as Jones is out, though, as the throw is in time for out number one. Jones retired on one pitch. So start the bottom of the third. Grounds out the third and Back-to-back -back batters retired by the starter and rudder. And Jones, a ninth hitter in the lineup, retired, moves us to the top of the order in Kripkowski. Struck out looking. He start the bottom of the first for Pebble East. He takes a ball 1-0. and He'll be followed by Tyreka, the first top two hitters in the lineup. It's that one in a center. Center fielder moving back just a few steps is under it. He makes the play in three pitches, two outs here for rudder. Here to start the bottom of the third. Right fielder, Ty Rica. So two outs for Rica. He got on. He was the first base runner for Beverly East. Both base runners for the Lancers have been two walks. It was the first one to Rica in the first, and the second one was to Hodap in the second. Hodap was a two-out walk. Rica was a one-out walk. Rico pops that one up in his center field. Shortstop's coming in. This is going to go into left center. The left fielder says, I got it. And he does. And Lancers have made quick work up. It's a 1 2 3 inning. Rudders retired four straight Lancer batters going back to the second. No runs, no errors, no walks, none left. We've played three from Lancer Stadium. It's Springfield 2, Beverly 0. This is Lancer Baseball on the Beverly's Broadcast North. We'll be right back.
We've played three here from Beverly. Starting the fourth, Faust back out there with the Senators leading the Lancers 2-0. First pitch missing 1-0. Here is Springfield's bottom part of the order, which gave Faust some problems first time through. 7-8-9. Hartle is up. Sam Hartle, the catcher, then followed by Arthur Davidson and Jeffrey Sturm. You look at the first time they were up, two for two. Two singles, a walk, and an RBI. It's really the bottom part, bottom four part of the order with Lamato, who also walked as well. He did, Faust did give him a strikeout to end the third inning. There's a good breaking ball, one and one. He's had that today. That pitch has been great. He's had four strikeouts because of it. Two looking and two swinging. That pitch is hit to the left side. Third baseman, Lindemann, the freshman, fields it, fires to first. He's got him out number one. Faust, good start here to the fourth inning. Needed that to start off. Faust has been giving up base runners with one or one out, two outs, and we'll see if he can avoid that here. Still looking for his first one, two, three inning. Added, could have had in the first, but an error, but he's uh, got to give props to him. Battled back after the runner reached second on a stolen base and was able to get rudder down looking. 1-0 here to Davidson, the second baseman. He swings and misses 1-1 at the second pitch. He walked first time up. It was the walk that loaded the bases for Springfield. Takes a ball 2-1. There's a strike two and two. Good pitch from Faust. And a very good first in and second in. Lost some, some of his stuff as Springfield was able to hit him. But he gets another K. His fifth of the day. These last two hits, man, he's been great. Now number two. It's three Ks for Faust in the last two innings. Two strikeouts in the third and one here in the fourth, and he's got two outs here. Bringing the ninth hitter, Jeffrey Stern, who had the RBI single in the second inning. I got Springfield on the board. Takes a first pitch for a ball, 1-0. and oh. Swing and a miss, 1-1. One and one. Ball's hit in the left field. Fares moves back, now goes to his left. He's under it. He makes the play. Faust, a 1 2 3, and included a strikeout, no runs, no hits, no walks, no errors, none left. We've played three and a half, halfway through in this one. It's Springfield 2, Lancers to bat. Here, this is Lancer Baseball. All the Bellies broadcast North. We'll be right back. Bottom of the four starts a strike to Caden Kagus. 3 4 5 for Beverly East here in the bottom of the fourth. Kagus, Fares, and Lineman. Anybody gets on, it'll be Noah Peters to follow. There's a swing and a miss. First two pitches, strikes to Kagus, who ground out to the shortstop for out number two back in the bottom of the first. Had a reek at second with one out, and then Lancers could not score in that first inning. They're still looking for. Their first hit, that's hit, a weak contact. Pitcher fields it to the right of home plate and he makes the play in time for out number one. He's retired. Five straight Lancer batters. Retired, 
Brings up Nas Ferris, who is 0 for 1, struck out swinging for the last out in the first. Hits the first pitch to the left side. Shortstop has it. He throws to first. He's got it. Quick work for Rudder. Two outs. Ranchers went down on five pitches in the bottom of the third and had a quick start. Four, four pitches from Rudder. Two outs. It'll bring up Lindemann. He grounded out to the second baseman to start the bottom of the second. See what he can do with two out here in the fourth. Takes a strike going on. Springfield in the top of the fifth will be the part, top part of the order. One, two, three. Scheffler will start things off. The leadoff hitter followed by Cruz and Impson. First time part of through the order for them. 0 for 3. This are actually 0 for 6 of the first two times now. As we're going to have a round visit here. That one missing 1 and 1. And that's going to be Rudder's last pitch for Springfield. So we're going to have a pitch and change. We're going to take a break, tell you about it next with a Two nothing the game. Springfield leads. Bottom four. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bell East Broadcast Network. Welcome back here for Bellies from the bottom of the fourth. Two outs today, one one count to Brody Lindemann. We have a pitching change to tell you about for Springfield as Ethan Rudder's day is done. He goes three and two thirds. He was a starter for Springfield. Three and two thirds, three Ks, two walks, no hits, no runs, given up. He's out of the game in a one one count, and he's actually behind the plate doing the catching now for Springfield. That's fouled off. One and two on the first pitch from the new pitcher for Springfield, and Brody Scheffler comes in from short. Scheffler on the year. Has pitched very, very good in four appearances. 2-0, and oh, a .95 ERA, 0 0.95 ERA. That pitch misses on the breaking ball, 2-2. Two and two. In those four appearances for Scheffler, he's pitched seven and one-thirds, four hits given up, one run. It was earned. Two walks and eight strikeouts. Not a guy that's going to walk, guys, but good case. That one misses three and two, and it's ran full now on Lindemann. Rudder was pulled mid at bat, all of a sudden a 1-1 pitch and coach comes out of the third base dugout and he's pulled. Lindemann hits a 3-2 foul, so payoff pitch coming. Full count, the pitch. Ball four, Lindemann's on, that's the third Lancer base runner. All walks, and Lancers have two out life here. Lindemann's 
So two outs for the Lancers, see what they can do. They had a two out walk for Hodap back in the second. Couldn't do anything with it. So now it's up to Peters with two outs. He hits the first pitch and a high fly ball on the right. Second baseman backing up. Makes the play for out number three. So Scheffler comes in, walks Lindemann, but gets Peters to pop out. After a walk, no hits, no runs, no errors. One left. We've played four innings from Bevel East. Springfield leads 2 nothing. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bellies Broadcast Network. Four and through in game one of the double header. Springfield Senators leading the Bellies Lancers 2 0. Glad to have you along on a Saturday afternoon. Steven Stocker with you. Four and through 2 0 is our score. Look at Faust, the starter for Bellies, who's out there to start his fifth inning of work. Made quick work in the fourth inning. Got his first 1 2 3 inning, getting a ground out strikeout and a fly out. And he's got a 2 0 count here to the leadoff hitter in Brody Scheffler. It's 1 2 3 due up for Springfield. Here in the fifth inning, Scheffler, Cruz, and Empson. Two and one gets the third pitch in there. Scheffler came in to pitch for their starter. Ethan Rudder pulled after three and two thirds. That pit, pitch misses three and one. Scheffler came in and faced Lindemann, walked him mid count. It was a one one count, came in and walked him, and then got Peters to pop out the second, and he's going to get walked here. It's Faust, a five-pitch walk. The leadoff runner's on for the first time today for Springfield. Not the way Faust wanted to start this fifth in and off. In the box, Carter Cruz. That's what's been heard in Faust is those walks. He allowed two of them in the second inning. That really hurt him. That's the inning where he gave up two runs. So here is Cruz. He is 0 for 2. Two ground outs. One to hold up and one to... To Lindemann. First pitch outside, 1 0. Oh. 1 0. Oh. It's in the dirt. Good block by Peters holding Scheffler at first, 2 0. Oh. It's outside 3 0 and Faust losing the strike zone here. Five pitch walk and now 3 0 down to the second batter. Not the way Faust wanted to start this fifth inning off. He was it's been great today besides that second inning. Ball four and he walked him. Nine pitches, eight of them balls, two walks to start this fifth inning. First two have reached for the Senators. And here comes Coach Wiggs out to the mound. We'll see if that's going to end Faust's day. But they mound visit coming. Back-to-back -back walks to start the fifth. And we'll see if he is going to take the game ball from Faust. New pitcher coming in for Beverly. So I'll tell you about it next. This is Lancer Baseball on the Beverly's Broadcast Network.
We're back here from Beverly East. We have a pitch and change to tell you about here with the top of the fifth. First two batters have reached on back-to-back -back walks from the starter. Logan Faust, and he is, his day is done as he's allowed two walks here to start the fifth. Lancers are going to another left-hander to back up Faust. They are going to the sophomore. And Reed Neumeyer, we saw a hit to start off the year, and he had a start to the season where he had his first four at-bats all be walks. For him, this is his first pitching appearance. So nothing to tell you about on this left-hander. Base is Emson, the three-hitter. He's 0 for 2, reached on the air, stolen base, and a strikeout. Pulls back a bunt after showing it. And first pitch misses 1-0 here in the fifth. We'll get Logan Faust's line once it's been completed as those two runners on are charged to him. Newmeyer's job is to make sure they don't score. So strike 1-1 one and one as Newmeyer fires one in there. For Belvalese, this is the seventh pitcher of the year for the Lancers. Pitching for Belvalese this year, Grimkowski, Monroe, Vernier, Lundeman, Faust, Hordap, and Rico. 1-1. One, one. one misses, 2-1. Emson has five RBIs on the season. Trying to add on to that tally here. Good count here as well, two and one. That ball's hitting right, coming in as Rika moving into his right, or sorry, his left, making the play. Fires one in there as going back to second was Scheffler, and he will get in there in time. So first and second, one after a fly. Al Neumeyer comes in and gets the first batter. One out with first and second. We play here in the fifth on the scoreboard, and Runs, hits, and errors through four plus innings for the visitors and the Senators. 2 3 0 for Beverly, 0 0 1. Here is the cleanup here of the starter today. Now, the catcher and Ethan Rudder. He had struck out looking and then singled back in the third. Rudder has two RBIs on the season. It's inside 1 0. Neumar got a fly out to get the first batter and see what he can do to follow it up. A 1-0. There's a strike one and one, good pitch. Outside two and one. That one just missed three and one. Trying to avoid a one-out walk to load the bases. Waiting on deck is the D.H. Lucas Richardson, 0 for 2. 3-1 count. Old App's going to tie his shoe. Now he's ready. Newmar back on the bump. Rudder in the box, 3-1. Here it comes. The pitch from the left-hander, Newmar. It's popped up. Right side, but out of play. 3-2, and two, and it runs full. See if Newmar can pick up his first strikeout of the season here. See his first varsity strikeout as well, the sophomore. Got a lot of those this year. First varsity RBI, first varsity strikeout. Zed side, he walked him. Six pitch walk, and the bases are loaded for the second time today for Springfield. Now, Newmeyer needs to get out of this with the bases loaded now as Richardson 0 for 2 steps into DH. First pitch missing 1 and 0. Newmeyer made quick work of Empson, but walked Rudder on six pitches. 
Richardson, two RBIs on the year. It's that one out of play, one and one. One, one. High, two and one. Pitch. Misses three and one. Now Newmeyer trying to avoid walking the bases loaded in for a run. Big pitch, three and one. Peters drops, they're gonna call it ball four. And it's three nothing Springfield, a RBI walk for Richardson, his third RBI of the year. Center's lead, three zero. Newmeyer has walked back to back batters, three nothing now. That run is charged to Faust. He, that was one of his walks as Noah Peters comes out, the catcher comes out to talk with Faust, or sorry, with Newmeyer after that first one misses. 1 0 to the next batter in Romanazzo. Came in and got made quick work of Empson and then couldn't. He had a rudder, it was a six pitch walk, six pitch walk, it was 3-1, got it to 3-2, and then walked him, and then Richardson with a five pitch walk. Missed the first one here, Amano 0 for 1, a walk and a strikeout today. Monzo, three RBIs on the year. He's trying to add on to that. Good spot for him. They're loaded. Fouls that one back, one and one. One, one, the pitch. Popped up. This is in the infield. It's going to go in foul territory. Peters. Near the net, and he's got to let that one go as it just hits off the fence. One and two. Newmeyer's got it to two strikes, looking for a strikeout here. One, two, count the pitch. Aye, right, for a ball, two and two. Newmeyer threw two straight strikes. Misses that one. Two, two. Got it, that's strike three. There you go. Well, I guess they, that two foul, that was two foul balls. So that, those two foul balls fouled it back and off the fence. Should be an alley. Yeah, they're going to get it now. As the ump didn't realize it, so he'll take it. Strike out for Newmeyer. Two away. So Newmeyer, after the amount of his, he don't want to two straight foul balls. There was a ball 2 2, and then he gets the third strike looking for round number two and try one out away from only giving up one here. The base is loaded, and it'll bring in the catcher, Sam Hartle. He's singled first time up, and he grounded out to third. Second time, one for two. Hartle does not have an RBI yet this year. Looking to get his first two on, three on, two out. First pitch, a strike from Newmeyer, Illinois. Lancers in the bottom of the fifth will be the bottom three. Part of the order in Hodap, Faust, and Jones. I assume Faust will be, see what they do with this spot coming up. It's fouled off, 0-2. Oh 
Martin, one strike away. That was his first varsity strikeout as well. On Romato. 0-2. We'll see if he can make it back-to-back -back and send this to the bottom of the fifth. 0-2 from the left-hander. High gets away. Peters hits right off the backstop right to him. He didn't have to move at all, and it keeps the runner at third. 1-2. and two. Try this again here for Newmeyer. And the pitch. Just missed. Two and two. All even up. Two two. Hit to right. Right fielder Tyreka back a few steps. Makes the catch for out number three. Newmeyer comes in and gets the last two outs and finishes. Faust is in it. Or gets the last three outs actually. Finishes the inning. After four walks, one run, no hits, no errors, three left. We've played four and a half. Senators have a three nothing lead. Lancers to bat. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bellies Broadcast Network. Lance is about here in the bottom of the fifth. They have a deficit of three now after a run given up in the top of the fifth, trying to come back here. As it's the bottom three part of the order, Owen Hodap starts things off. He's followed by Logan Faust and Jalen Jones. This is 2-0 to Hodap. Owen walked first time up with two outs in the second. It was the second walk of the season. Facing the right-hander, and Scheffler came in to pitch for the starter, Ruther. Fells off the pitch on 2-0, now 2-1. Next one coming to Hodap. Pops it up in the infield behind the pitcher's mound. Shortstop makes the catch. There's out number one. So one out coming in for Faust in the top of the fifth. Neumauer, who gets the last three outs, he's going to hit for Faust here. And this is as Faust went 0 for 1, struck out looking back in the second. Neumauer made his first pitching appearance of the season. Takes a strike after fouling off the first 1-0-2. Springfield's made quick work of the Lancer batters these last two innings going into this third inning. Got Faust looking to end the second. And Bellboys went down one, two, three on five pitches in the third. And the first two batters in Cagus and Fairs were tired were quickly in the fourth. 
and a walk, and Peters retired on first pitch to end the fourth. Next two have missed. It's a 2-2 count. I'll leave it up now. Next pitch to Reed. Takes strike three looking, and there's the first strike out of the afternoon for Scheffler in relief, out number two. Got him looking. So we'll go down to Jalen Jones with two outs. Jones grounded out to third, first time up. Takes a pitch inside. 1 0. That ball's hit. Right side, second baseman trying to make a leap in play, and it gets past him. And that's the first Lancer hit of the afternoon. I don't know. They're going to call it a hit for now on the scoreboard. So it's a base hit for Jones. Number two, Tommy Santella. Two out single, another two out base runner for Beverly. They've That's the third of their four base runners. It came with two outs. Here is the top of the order, Alan Kremkowski. He is 0 for 2, a strikeout and a flyout. Strike going one to Tommy. Trying to keep it going here with two outs. Lancers, if they could keep this good, be that top part of the order with Kromkowski or the leadoff hitter. It's where your best opportunity can come. I mean, have Rika, they good average on deck, and then it's Kagus who has two RBIs on the year. Be your three hitter if you can keep it going. Go to Kropkowski hits that to right for a base hit, and Tommy's on with two out. It's first and second, back to back hits by Jones and Kropkowski. Just hit that to right, good hit ball, good swing. So now it's up to Rika if the Lancers trying to respond after a run given up in the fifth, made it a three nothing ball game. So here is Rika. He is 0 for 2, or sorry, 0 for 1. A walk and a fly out. He swings the first pitch and taps it foul. 0 and 1. Jones with some speed at second. If you need a base hit, that'll drive him in. Rika with one RBI on the year. Swing a miss. 0 oh and 2. Shuffler trying to get a second K of the out and get the last out for Springfield. The 0 oh 2. Rika hits it to left field. This ball, if it stays fair, and it is. That ball's going to get down all the way to the wall. Jones will score. Kripkowski's going to round third. He will score. Rika's at second standing up. It's a two-run double with two outs by the senior Tyrika. And it's a one-run ball game just like that. The Lancers with two outs. Some two-out hitting. Three hits here. And it's 3-2. Big piece of hitting by the senior. You needed him to come through. Lancers have not had a hit like that yet, and here it comes as Jones started at this single. And then Kripkowski, a good swing, and Ty just hits that to left. One one on Kagus. He's got two RBIs. Can he tie this game up? Got Rika in scored position at second. Good pitch from Scheffler to battle back. It's 0-2 now. Trying to get this last out. Ty Rika RBIs number two and three on that two run double. Jones and Kromkowski are the runs. 0-2 the pitch. Foul tip, just got a piece of that. Foul, fouled it off, staying alive. 
Springfield in the top of the six will be 8 9 1. Davison, Sturm, and Scheffler. Gagas on a 0 2. Hits to the left side. Third baseman has to make the play. Fires over to first, and Kegas is out in time by the Lancers. Get back into this one. They score two and a two-run double by Tyreek. It's a 1-1 ball game. After three hits, two runs, no walks, no errors, one left. Five minutes through out of the six. Springfield leads 3-2. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bellies Broadcast Network. First pitch to the leadoff hitter. Davidson's hit down the left field line for a base hit. Davidson thinking two. Ferris gets it in. The throw to second. The tag is just a bit light in there safely with a leadoff double. Is Davidson facing the left-hander Neumeyer out for a second inning? And Springfield trying to respond to the two-run double by Tyreka that made it a 3-2 ball game. 8-9-1, that was the 8th hitter, Davidson. Now it's the ninth hitter, Sturm. He's 1-2, for two, RBI single and a flyout. Shows bunt, brings it back, and misses 1-0. Oh. Oh. I will say he did not go as well. 1-0 oh is the count. Meyer got Imps in the first batter he faced with two on, nobody out in the fifth in relief for Faust. Got him down. And then walk the next guys, including walking in a run. That's going to go foul on the point. One and one down the first baseline. Faust to have a stat. Fifth hit and it's been completed. His line in that it for today is he was the starter for Bellies to win four innings. Five Ks, four walks, three hits, two runs, three earned. It was that runner at second that he was charged to that scored. As he walked the first two guys to start off the fifth inning. One and one. Pitch. Swing and a miss. Good pitch by Neumeyer. One and two. Umar, the one, two. He's got it. Swing to miss to the pitch in the dirt. Peters applies the tag on the drop third strike for out number one. His second K of the day for Umar. Big out number one. Got the leadoff double now and out. Now to the top of the order, leadoff hitter in Scheffler. Got everything started off in the fifth for the center as he's. 0 oh for 2 today, two fly outs at RVI and a walk. Got a sack fly that made it 2 0 in the second. One one. Run misses, 1 and 1. One one. 
Sent to the left side. Shortstop Kromkowski has the runner in a jam from between second and third, and the throw down to second. He did he get the tack? He did. As Hodap applied it for out number two. As Kromkowski saw Davidson break for third, and he gets the out for out number two. So Scheffler reaches on the fielder's choice. It is an out. Two away, a runner at first, and Newmeyer one more out away from getting out of this and see if the Lancers can continue the momentum at the plate. Lancers will have four, five, six. It'll be Fairs, Litteman, and Peters. Runners off, it's in the dirt. Peters throws to second, the throw. It's not in time and not even a tie apply. It was off to the Right a second, so a stolen base for Scheffler. And just like that, Springfield has that runner back at second base. It's time with two outs. There's a strike one and one. Balls popped up. That is going to go out of play. One and two. One, two, count the pitch. That tie gets away from Peters and taking third now it is Chef, where he's one base away. 2-2 two, two count even up and a runner at third. Two out. As we play here in the top of the sixth in game one of a doubleheader. 3-2. Now 3-2. That one missed. Trying to avoid a walk. It would be number three if he can. Sits at two on the verge of number three. Trying to avoid it. 3-2. Popped up. Let's see who's got it. On the right side of the infield, Neumeyer's under it. Puts the glove up. He's got it. Out number three. And Springfield will strand the runner at third. After one hit, no runs, no errors, no walks, one left. So we've played five and a half. Springfield leads 3-2. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bellies Broadcast Network. Well, back here to Lancer Stadium. 3-2, Springfield holds on to a one-running advantage. And as we start playing the bottom of the sixth, Scheffler out there for another inning of work. First pitch, a strike going one. Ferris swings and misses. Going to Ferris is over 2 a strikeout and a ground out to short. 
Good work by Neumeyer in the top of the six after a leadoff double to get three straight retired and keep it a one-run game and see if his offense can do the rest. That's a drop third strike after a swing and a miss. The catcher fires over to first and retired for out number one. And that's another K for Scheffler, his second of the day. Three pitches, one out on the K, and it'll bring in the freshman third baseman, Rody Lindemann, 0 for 1 with a ground down and a walk. Lancers three hits now in the game, all three coming last inning. Jones, Kromkowski, and Rika. First one missed, 1 and 0 to Lindemann. Walk second time up. He puts a drive in this one to left center field. Left fielder moving back a little bit. He's under and makes the play. Four out, number two. And they're in 0 for 2 now in the day. Five pitches, two outs. They'll bring in Peters. He's 0 for 2 with a fly out to right and a pop out to second. Springfield in the seventh inning. It'll be the last inning where they can get some insurance if the Lancers get the last out here. As Peters hits it to the left side. Third baseman makes a awkward play. And they're going to, what's the call here? Did they say it was a foul ball? Coach Wiggs is already going to come over. As Springfield's going to leave the field. And Wiggs is going to argue this call. Say it was a foul ball. We're going to, he's, Peters stopped running about a few steps to end the, down the first base line, and Coach Wiggs is around the two umps who are conference are now. Springfield has left the field. They're in their dugout with two outs. Peters swung at the first pitch and a ground ball. The third baseman made a kind of field of the ball kind of stopped and then threw. And Peters will come get his bat. Looks like that's going to end the sixth inning. Through sixth here at Beverly Springfield leads 3-0. This is Lancer Baseball on the Beverly's Broadcast Network. We'll be right back. Six innings, three here from Beville East. Our first game of a doubleheader between the Senators of Springfield and the Lancers of Beville East. I'm Stephen Stock with you. And the first pitch from Neumeyer is a ground ball to second from Empson. It goes off of Hodap. And Empson's on the first pitch for Springfield. A hard hit ball to the right side. And Hodap couldn't make the play. So a runner on at first. Going to give it an error. E4 to start the seventh. As we look at the scoreboard, on runs, hits, and errors for the visitors and the senators. 3 4 0 for Beverly East, 2 3 2. Neumeyer pitched the fifth inning. Came in with two on, nobody out. Gets out of it after giving up a one run after walking two straight batters. With one out. Then the sixth inning gave up a leadoff double, a retired three straight to strand the runner 
at second, third base. That ball's popped up. Foul territory on the right side on 0 1 pitch. First baseman Kagus is there. He's going to make the catch for out number one. And Newmar battles back after an air for out number one here. Took two pitches. Bevel East will have their last crack at things in game one. In the bottom of the seventh, down in the last three outs, it will be the bottom part of the order. Hordap, Newmeyer, and Jones, 7 8 9. That part of the order through the first two times around as the runner's off for second base. They threw it over to first, and he's safe. Try to pick him off, but he was already off, way off for second base was Empson. He's going to get in second. One out, runner at second base now for Springfield, trying to get an insurance run here. Well, at least that first time, second time through the order in the bottom three part, they were one for five, a single walk and a run. Newmeyer misses the first one and oh to the next batter in Richardson. Lucas Richardson is the DH. He is 0 for two with a walk and an RBI today. RBI spot for him here. Swing and a miss, one and one. E4 and then a pick off to first and run right over to second with Zimpson and a pop out. Side two and one. Springfield scored two in the second inning and scored one in the fifth inning. Lancers followed with two in the bottom of the fifth. Peters down to third, runners off, safe. Another stolen base. Simpson had one in the first inning. He's going to get another one here in the seventh. He's all over the place. And it's a 3-1 count, runner at third, one out. Empson moving up a base and makes things much easier to bring home a much needed certain run here in the seventh. 3-1, the pitch. That's fouled back, count goes full 3-2. On deck for the Senators is Romano, who is 0 for 2, two strikeouts and a walk. Got five RBIs still in the air. That's fouled back in our payoff pitch coming from Umar. That's it, left side, third baseman. Lindemann takes a look back at third on Empson and just fires over to first held him and he gets the out as well. Big out number two. Richardson's retired. Lancers need one more out here to keep it a one-run game and see if the offense can extend the game at the bottom three up. Here is Romano, first pitch high, 1-0. Five RBIs through the first five for him. It's been a big part of the four wins for Springfield. Four and one, Lancers three and four. There's a strike one and one, and Peters throws it down to third. Empson's in there. So he was a few steps away from third base. Been all over the base paths today. One one. Swing and a miss. Good pitch. Newmeyer, one strike away here. Two strikeouts to his name today, trying to make it three. Get this last out. Strand the runner at third, make it a, keep it a one-run ball game, going to the bottom of the seventh. The pitch is fouled back. The pitch. Foul back again. Foul here between Romano and Newmar.
Another one two coming. Newmeyer. Left hander. Pitch. I. Two and two. Two two. High and he missed. Three and two. One more strike trying to get that pitch. On deck is Hartle 0 for 1 for 3. Single ground down a fly out. Full count the pitch. Fouled back again. Another battle. Payoff pitch coming. Try it again. Here it comes. A payoff pitch with a runner at third. Two out from Newmeyer. He walked him. It was low. Newmeyer's third walk of the outing for him, and it's runners at the corners now. Two out. He took second base. Romano just took second base. So it's second and third, two out. Now he'll take an extra base on it. Just kept jogging and jogging. So now it brings in Hartle. One for three. Single ground out a fly out. That pitch is inside. One and oh. He has no RBIs on the season yet. Trying to get one here. It could plate two in this. Completely erased. Runners off for home. Here comes the throw. And he is safe. Oh, he balked. That's what they're going to call. He was safe anyway, but they're going to say he balked, which would move the runner up from second as well, and it's going to score. Four to two, Senators lead. Two outs, runner at third. And it's a 2 0 count, so they're going to get home one anyway and chance to make home another. Foul back 2 and 1. So Lancers now will have to get two in the bottom of the seventh. 3 and 1, that one missed. Pitches hit to the left side. Lindemann backs up a few steps. Makes the play. Over to first. He's got him. Well, Springfield gets a run back on a little insurance. As a score one on a walk, air, balk. No hits in the inning. We've played six and a half. This is it for Pebble East. Down to the last three outs. It's a two-run ball game. This is Lancer Baseball on the Pebble East Broadcast Network. Scheffler for Springfield back out on the bump for his fourth inning of work, and he will look to end this game, needing three outs and look to send home Springfield a game one win in this doubleheader. He's got two runs to work with after an insurance run in the top half, and he hits the pinch hitter, Kale Briscoe, on the first pitch. Pinch hitting for Hodap, and 
The Lancers had the tie run up at the plate just like that. It took one pitch to get a guy on. He'll take that when it's given to you. And Kale Briscoe will be pinch ran for. Pitch hitter will be Grady Davis. So Davis will pinch run for Kale Briscoe. Hodap went 0 for 1 if they walk in it. Put out, got pinch hit. Briscoe, one pitch, hit by pitch. And now here is Newmeyer, 0 for 1. He pinch hit for Faust, who was also 0 for 1. They both struck out. Faust that one off 0 and 1. Lancers have a time run up at the plate. A balk brought in the fourth run. They run in the top half of the seventh to get this to a two run ball game. Newmeyer was one strike away with a runner at third, two out, and couldn't fire home that third strike. Ended up walking him and then the balk on a 1-0 pitch after the first pitch was a ball and then balked and everyone moved up. Swing and a miss. So and two on Newmar. This is the bottom part of the order. 7-8-9 for Bevelis down to the last three outs needing two runs to extend this game. Jalen Jones is on deck. He is one for two. He got everything started off in the Fifth inning for Bavalis. He had that single and then came home on the two-run double by Rika. So Bavalis is trying to get to that part of the order again with the runners on. And a good start with Briscoe on at first. Just need to see if Newmeyer can continue it. There's still nobody out the pitch. It is hit down the left field line. This is going to be in fair territory. Was it caught? And they're going to say it was a sliding catch as Briscoe's trying to tag up and the ball. Trying to make a play with a second baseman. He couldn't get, handle the ball and apply a tag. Or they're going to say, was it a hit? I thought he caught the ball. They're going to call it a hit. So, Newmeyer's on. It looked like it was caught. Now the coach is out for Springfield. Because it left fielder, and one of the positional players for Springfield was signaling that the ball was caught. They're going to huddle. So if this is a hit, which they just now put up on the scoreboard, they're say safe at second base is, is Kale Briscoe. So it's a hit for Newmeyer. And the Lancers, out of a little chaos here to start the bottom of the seventh, have two on, nobody out for Jalen Jones. The Lancers have the tie run on at first. That's their fourth hit of the game. They've tied Springfield. Bevelis has pitched solid in this game. Four hits, only only four hits given up. You really just take away that second inning with the walks from Faust. It's been an excellent pitching game. He's, and you take away the block as well. It's been a great game. Now let's see if the offense can... Continuing, they had a good fifth inning. Here's Jones. He got everything started off that fifth inning with a single. It was a one-out hit. Sorry, two-out hit. First and second, nobody out. Two-run game in the seventh inning. Jones hits this ball to left field. Left fielder's going back, and he makes the play as he tumbles. With the ball in his glove for out number one. What a catch by the left fielder. He definitely just saved a run, maybe even two, with Newmeyer's speed at first. What a play. Jones put a ride in that baby, but left fielder made a great catch. So now it goes to Krebkowski. He's single to right. Scored in the fifth inning after that single. The two-run double by Rika that brought him in. One for three on the day total. Kromkowski, two on, one out. First pitch to Tommy. Fouls it back going on. Tommy, no homers, one RBI. That RBI came in the Juliet West game to open up the year. Came in batting 292. Second pitch taken, one and one after that one misses inside. And 
Texas, two and one. Do one to Tommy. That's in the dirt. Everyone will stay put. We won't even risk it. Green one. Didn't get away enough. But if Tommy can walk, they would be juiced. All loaded up for Rika. He was the guy that did the damage in the fifth. He waits on deck. That was RBI's number two and three for Rika in the fifth inning. Three and one, here it comes to Tommy with two on, one out. The pitch, ball four. Tommy is low to the bases. Hit by pitch, single and a walk. Have him loaded for the Lancers, down by two with two outs to play. Can Ty do it again as here comes the coach for Springfield out of the third base dugout. And we'll see what Springfield wants to do is they're going to conference on the mound and Coach Wicks will call one as well. He will gather his base runners. Coach Yates also will join with this. It'll be Ty Rika and then Briscoe Newmeyer and Tommy and then also the on-deck guy, which is Caden Kagas, all near the walk-up circle for Pavel East. And the Springfield Senators are going to have a few changes here, it looks like. A few guys are going to change gloves. That's what it's going to be. See here what we're gonna. It looks like we're gonna have a new. Is that a new pitcher? It looks like we're gonna have a new pitcher to tell you about. So we'll tell you about it next after a break. Lanterns have them loaded, one out. This is Lancer Baseball on the Valley's broadcast over. Lancers have them loaded one out. We welcome you back here. Springfield leading 4-2. Lancers down the last two out. The batter is Tyreka. And we have a new pitcher to tell you about as the day is done for the right-hander in of Springfield, Brody Scheffler. We're going to go to Sam Hartle, another right-hander. He comes in to try to get these last two outs for the centers facing Tyreka. And how about this for Bowles? He's peered in one game this year. He's 0-1. He got the loss with a 28 ERA. In the one inning, he gave up six hits, four runs, all earned. Can the Lancers take advantage of that? One walk, one K. Tyreka has him loaded. He did the damage last time in the fifth. Got the Lancers on the board. He's one for two. Walk, fly out, two-run double. Two-run game. They're loaded. One out. First pitch. Strike one to tie. 0-1. Oh on. Scheffler came in relief for Rudder. Who was pitching a no-hitter through three and two-thirds. He was great. Scheffler came in and made quick work of the Lancers in the fourth and the sixth, but gave up two in the fifth, and now he's low to the paces. They're all charged to him. And Ty is down 0-2, just like that. Kegas is on deck for Bevel East. The 0-2. Rika, left field. Left field line, it's going to go foul. That's that was the one the Lancers wanted there. 
And that ball to get down in fair territory that goes foul. Dardle in that game that he appeared in was a start as well. He was pulled after one inning. Face 10 batters. Tie another 0 2 coming. They're loaded. It's at foul. He's fighting. Three straight fouled off by Ty. Another 0-2 coming. Good take. One and two. Now a 1-2 to tie. Pitch. Didn't offer. He held up. 2-2. Two and two. Team it up now. Fouled off three straight. He's taking two. 2-2 two, two now. See if he can just... Continue this down by two. Just needs to keep the game alive. And he fouls that one back. What a battle here. The seniors. He's been in these spots before. He's experienced. One of the leaders on this team that Coach Wiggs has relied on. Can he come through in a spot here? Another 2-2. Two -two. One out. Base is loaded. Two-run game. Springfield scored one in the top half of the seventh to make it a two-run ball game. The 2-2. Two -two. Ball three. It's full. Need one more to miss just like that. It is full. One out and a 3-2 pitch coming to tie. Three RBIs on the year, two in the day. Here it comes on a 3-2 from Hartle. First batter is faced out of the pen. Ty hits to the left side. It's a base hit. Round at third. Here comes Newmar. The plant the plate. He's safe. Throw gets away. Moving up to third's Tommy. Ty's at second. It's a base hit. Two RBIs. Two runs. We are tied. Ty Rink has done it all today. 4-4 four, four in the seventh. Now they can walk it off. How about that, folks? Tyreka won a battle on a 3-2 pitch. He fouled off four pitches in that at-bat. Oh, man, what about some of those takes, those first two balls? Great takes. Now it's Kegas. Can he win the game? Hit to the right side. Lanters win! Coming from third, Tommy Grabkowski. And the Lanters win game one. The dugout rushes. Kegas at first base. It's a 5-4 walk-off winner in game one. The Lancers were down 3 to nothing, made it 3-2. to two. Then it was 4-2 after a run in the seventh, and the Lancers scored three in the bottom half to win game one, 5-4. to four. The Lancer offense comes through. We'll talk about it next here in a few minutes here on the Bellies Broadcast Network.
Welcome back in here to Beverly. It's game one. It's done. Two stock with the Lancers take game one and double under five to four walk off fashion, folks. How about the end of that one? Three runs in the seventh. The offense incredible. What a game from Tyreka. He was phenomenal today. Just phenomenal. Three for sorry, two for three. Got on pace three times. Four RBIs today for Tyreka, and he gives the Lancers a win. You look at Bevel East, they were hitless going to the fifth inning. And Jalen Jones got it started off, then it was Tommy Karpkowski, and then Tyreka. Seventh inning. Only three hits in the game, and here comes three hits again for three runs. And Katie Kagas put a great ball to the right side as well to walk off the game. That is phenomenal. Great pitching by Beverly. East. I mean, you look at the walks from Faust, I mean, there was errors. I, I think if you take my second, and that second wasn't Faust's inning. You look at the rest of his performance today. Incredible. Just incredible. Faust was great besides that second inning. Great. Takeaway Newmeyer's balk. He was very solid as well. The pitch was good today. And we talked about when the pitching is good. It's been good this season. There's only been one game that's been you throw out against St. Louis uh, University uh, and the Junior Bills. Uh, obviously, you throw that game out. They're incredible over there in St. Louis. Uh, that, that That's a game that you're probably not going to win. They're so good. It's, it's tough. It's tough to beat them. And the way they hit the ball, you know, they score 10 runs against Bell Leafs. That's hard, you know. You got to throw that out. Because every other game for Bell Leafs besides the Slough High game has been great pitching. That's what you just saw today, and it was great. We talked about if the pitching stays like that, you got your offense going. You get your offense going, you're going to win some ball game. So what did we just happen here? The offense gets going, and they win the ball game 5-4. to four, A great win for Bell East in game one. Let's relive it. We'll take a break. Get you that. We'll relive that Bob the seventh for you next. Welcome back here to Bevel East. Get ready for game two in just a few minutes. We're going to get you to the end of that bomb of the seventh here at game one. The last two pitches of the game. It's a 3-2 count. Bases loaded. One out Tyreek at the plate. Here's how that walk-off winner for Bevel East sounded from Tyreek and Kaden Kagas. Coming to tie. Three RBIs on the year two in the day. Here it comes on a 3-2 from Hartle. First batter, he's faced out of the pen. Ty hits the left side. It's a base hit. Round at third. Here comes Newmeyer. The play at the plate. He's safe. Throw gets away. Moving up to third, Tommy. Ty's at second. It's a base hit. Two RBIs, two runs. We are tied. Ty Rink has done it all today. 4-4 four, four in the seventh. Now they can walk it off. How about that, folks? Tyreka won a battle on a 3-2 pitch. He fouled off four pitches in that at-bat. Oh, man, what about some of those takes, those first two balls? Great takes. Now it's Kegas. Can he win the game? Hits to the right side. Lancers win! Coming from third, Tommy Grabkowski. And the Lancers win game one. The dugout rushes. Kegas at first base. It's a 5-4 walk-off winner in game one. The Lancers were down. That's how game one, a walk-off winner for Bevel East looked in sound here. We're going to for game two. We're going to take a break here between game one and game two. We're going to do the same thing we did yesterday if you watch softball. We're going to have some bonus coverage for you. We're going to go to, do I have, let's see, what, what type of coverage do I have? I haven't played anything I haven't played yet. I got to see if I have anything I can play. That I, that I 
haven't played yet. I don't want to see if I have anything new. I don't think I do. I think I've used everything up here. I think I may go to, um, let's see here. What do I have? What do I have? Give me one second here, boys. So, uh, we're going to for game two here in a minute. Take a break here and get your, get your bonus coverage. But we're taking game one over Springfield, five to four. We've got to keep you entertained. That's the that was what we do here. I don't know if I have any bonus coverage that I haven't used yet. I don't think I do. I don't see anything on my computer unless it's something on here maybe. Hold on. All right, we do. All right, we're going to go to some immaculate grid from the fall with Coach Padgett and Coach Brockman. That will be next year. We're going to go into bonus coverage. Lancers take game one, five to four. We'll be back in a few minutes for game two. Between Springfield and Beville East. Here on the Beville East Broadcast Network. I love it. I don't know what to do with my hands in the, in the picture here. Just keep, them, just keep them off of me. That's all. Welcome in here to the halftime of the Lincoln Way West Beville East game. Hopefully, Lancers are up by. A few points here at the half, and for you guys' halftime entertainment on the road here, so not much uh, entertainment, obviously, the band or dance team not able to uh, perform here at the half, so I brought in two fine gentlemen that I know, two, uh, two gentlemen I know very well, uh, Coach Pageant and Coach Brockman. There you go, them two. And uh, so them two are going to try and play uh, Immaculate Grid uh, and get get a good score on it. Uh, if you do not know what Immaculate Grid is, you'll find out by, uh, as we go on, but pretty much... It's a tic-tac-toe grid. It's a three-by-three, three, and there's teams on the top, teams on the left, and for each box, you have to guess a player for that played for those two teams. So like if it's Cardinals, Brewers in the top left part, uh, you could go Ted Simmons, Colton Wong would be uh, two good ones there. And uh, Rally fingers. Rally fingers. There you go. We're already getting started. We're That's not right. so. Right. These two are gonna I try. It's not the Brewers. Wait, did Rally fingers play for the Cardinals? I think he did. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, so these two are going to play, and we'll see how well they do. Obviously, uh, I think these two are pretty knowledgeable when it comes to sports, so we're, we're going to find out. Yeah, the sports in the 80s, maybe. I'm not yeah. so sure about it. Too busy coaching. I'm not going to oversell myself. Yeah, here. too busy coaching to be following this. So. Well, here we go. So we're So do we go in turn here? Whatever no, you guys we're going to together. Right? Yeah, you guys so do it together. We're together. Ooh. So this is somebody who played for both the Yankees and the Padres. Yeah, you got in. Yes. Oh, I know that's uh, Dave Winfield. Okay, that's a good. Wow, one. Dave what a start! What a start! Yeah. There we go. All right, here I can do that. So Dave Winfield. All right. What is that? Oh. Seven point two percent. How about nice. that? That's, that's pretty. Legit. That's a pretty good poll. Okay, Phillies and Yankees, or how about? Oh, I, I know. I know Royals. And is Padres. that that Moose guy? Uh, what's Moose Eric Cosmer? Okay, Eric Cosmer. Eric Cosmer. Yeah, yeah gonna click on it. Yep, there you go. All right. See, we're going old school and new school now. That's right. That's right. Yeah, the, our new school Royals are from seven years ago. Uh, Eric. <laughs> That's the only Royals in recent memory that are worth, <laughs> worth mentioning. Eric Cosmer. Okay, so we're confident on Eric Cosmer. I'm All right. very confident on Eric Cosmer. So two home runs in the same game, and they have to be a Padre? Yeah. I mean, Fernando Tatis Jr. has done that. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking, too. We can come, let's come back to that one. Okay, okay. For the Royals, Yordani or Yordano Ventura, aka wow. Ace Ventura. That's what the, a pull. The late, oh, late wow. great Ace Ventura. I'm not going to be able to spell that. Just, first name. Be... Just do Ventura. Yeah. Should be that. Yordano Ventura. Yordano. Yep, Yordano. Okay, Yordano. A great pizza place in Chicago, Yordano's. Oh, I don't think that's the same. That's Probably the same not. Yeah. Uh, there's got to be all kinds of Yankees that are born in the Dominican. Oh, uh, Shortstop, not Derek Jeter, uh, Fernandez. D.D. Gregorius, because he was not born in the Dominican Republic. Oh, no. Hey, but uh, I think he was born in the Netherlands, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Two home runs in the same game. For a Philly? Pete Vukovic. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> Ryan Howard. Okay. I'd say that's probably a safe bet. Ryan Howard. But I bet Pete Vukovic works as well. I don't even know who you that would, is. I mean, what if you guys want to go Pete? You can go with whoever you feel like. I feel like Ryan Howard's guys, a safe bet guys, because he hit like 58 home runs yeah. in one year. Uh, Ryan Howard. Okay. St. Louis product. 
Yes, winner, 15%. I bet Pete Vukovic is less than you. <laughs> it's probably like, we can see after this. Oh, uh, or was it? Was it the? I think it was two home in the same game. Yeah, I think you were asking about two home. Oh, for the, for the and what same. team? For the for the Phillies. Phillies. There he is, Pete Vukovic. Not a pitcher, by the way. He looks like a pitcher in that. He picture. does. He does look like he's pitching. Oh, uh, oh, you know what I was thinking? Greg Luzinski. That's the guy I was thinking. <laughs> like, this guy didn't even play yeah, for the Phillies. Is. Come on now. Yeah. I was thinking Greg Luzinski. He was the guy that he hammered all kinds of home runs. Padres. You want to go with Fernando Tatis? Because that's what I thought of, too. I don't know if that's going to I mean, be correct or not. Other Padres that would hit two home runs. Steve Garvey. I mean, Dave Winfield, Dave possibly. Winfield. You got Dave Winfield, though. So we can't, we can't use, use him twice? twice. We can't use him twice. Okay. It's an outrage. Oh. What kind of game is this? Although I can't think of anybody else who played for both the Padres and the Yankees, although I'm sure yeah. there's plenty. So Fernando Tatis Jr. Let's go with runs? it. Okay. I know his dad hit two grand slams in the same inning. Not the same. Not the same. Yeah, not the Fernanda. Fernando. Not Valenzuela. Not Valenzuela. Fernando Tatis Jr. Jr. Yes. Got him. 30, Got him. What was that, 24%? 24%. 24%. Not bad. Yankees. You think about Yankees and Phillies. I'll think about Royals and Phillies since okay. I'm a KC product. You should know that. Mustak, did Mustakas play for the Phillies? Didn't he sign with the Phillies? Well, we know this. Nobody went from the Phillies to the Royals. Correct. They would have to go from the Royals to the Phillies. <laughs> Correct. Uh, we could definitely say, like, David Ortiz probably would be a good... Is he born in the Dominican? Yeah, he's a Dominican. Is he? Yeah. Okay. So, David Ortiz. I mean, I assume at some point in his career, he hit two home runs in the same... Well, he hit, like, eight home runs against the Cardinals in one game in the World Series, so... <laughs> At 2013. That would have been a record. Uh, yeah. I mean, everything the guy hit was a home run. Yep, there you go. There we go. There's got to be tons of examples. Yeah. Robinson Cano. Oh, what about the pitcher, Mariano Rivera? Is he Dominican? No, he's Panamanian. Panamanian. Yeah. Robinson Cano. He's born in the Dominican? I pretty, so. pretty sure. I believe so. I'm sure there's many, many others that we're forgetting about. Oh, yeah. Not Robinson Chico. No. <laughs> All right, Robinson Cano, seven, bam. Seven for seven. Okay. Mm. Can we phone a friend? What do you mean by phone a friend? I have this friend named Google Search. That you know, <laughs> would be very helpful. Mustakas a Philly? I feel like he signed with the Phillies. He One eternity later. Should we go with Mustakas on Royals Phillies there? All right. Let's test our luck here. Mm. You got two guesses left to go two for two. Mustakas. Surely there's somebody from the Phillies. Roll the, the dice. Yankees. Here we go. Doe. Oh. Not right. Okay, so I don't, now I won't feel. Now there's not as much pressure on me for the Yankees and the Phillies. Yeah. Keeping the strike, or we're keeping the baseball out of the middle of the strike zone yeah. there, you know, keeping right. it That's out of the middle. Yeah. We're keeping it down and on the corners. Hmm. What was the name of the guy who played center field? Aaron Rowland. Remember that guy? Yeah. He broke his nose going into the outfield wall. Yeah. Didn't he play for the Yankees? Oh, I can't confirm that for sure. I know he played for the Phillies because he broke his nose with the Phillies. We could have at least got the Cardinals on here. Yeah. You take the home. Hey, got the, we got the Royals on here, yeah, and I missed still, that one too. Still went two for three. If you could guess, I don't know. If Might as well. If it's wrong, we're blaming Brockman. So. W or R O. W L A N C E R uh, Roland Office. <laughs> uh, why don't you just put an Aaron? Yeah, and then do Roland. A A A A A A Ron. Aaron. There Roland, is. not Roland. Right, Roland. Here we go. Here we go. What a shirt. Oh, oh man. So, let's see who you guys missed on. Missed on Didi Gregorius. I think one of you guys mentioned him for the Born in, born in Dominican Republic. Oh, yeah. And then it looks like Michael Franco. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Alan, never to guess that. Yeah. He's a recent player, and I don't He's even know recent, who really yeah. One of them super easy. Right? Okay, yeah, so Rivera. Yeah. I guess we're doing this one. Yeah, too. I guess. Uh, yeah. Well, 
I could spell aim with the uh, Trevor uh, Trevor Hoffman Hoffman and then uh, K Rod himself K-Rod, yeah, was say, K-Rod, Francisco I think Rodriguez Troy Percival also got forty six. Oh, I think you're right. Trevor Hoffman, long lost cousin of Ray Hoffman. Uh, and what's his name? Who are we going with? Uh, Francisco yeah, I, Rodriguez. I think Rodriguez is more of a. He had like 62 in one year. Yeah. I think he set the record. Rally Monkey. Oh, nice. Okay. Angels. So a player that played for the Mets and the Angels. Mm, Mets and. Oh, uh, Nolan Ryan. Wow. Ah, good one. Wow. Really good one. Nolan Ryan. Eat your heart out, Robin Ventura. Okay. Ooh, Mets and Yankees. I have no idea. Uh, Daryl Strawberry. Daryl Strawberry. There you go. I was gonna say. All right. Yankees, Tigers. You should know all the Tigers for heaven's sake. I mean, just no. Yeah. I don't know that much about the Tigers. Uh, man, the Tigers is gonna be tough. Yeah, but we're done. Yeah. Let's, let, let's try football. Yeah, well, all right. Look at this. Right now, as many team to team. Yeah, and there's more. It's more fantasy. Let's wise. go, Kelsey. Top top fifteen fantasy finisher since two thousand. Let's go, Mahomes. Oh, we don't have to put. Okay. So Mahomes. All right. Thousand yard rushing in the season. Put go Priest. Priest Holmes. Oh, yeah. The, right. the Priest. One of the all time great Chiefs. Well, two for two. Better start. Yeah. Chiefs for the, for the Dolphins. How about Larry Zonka? Larry Zonka for the Dolphins, yeah. In those days, that was a big deal. I hope Larry Zonka did it. CZ? CZ, yeah. forever just goes Larry C and then just gonna narrow it down a little bit see us okay we, f- we feel good yeah, about Larry Zonka right about that yeah yes how much is that is this a 5.8 6.8 6.8 um the Tyree Kittle for that one you think he finished top 15 last, last year? year he did he was almost last MVP year. caliber last year a great category. I don't know about this one. Yep. Okay. Still need a 40 point fantasy game and a top team, top 15 fantasy. Can game. we use Mahomes? Can. Go uh, Adrian Peterson. There you go. Oops. I mean, hot sausage fingers over here. Well, it's t- I mean, to type into the computer. Yeah, so, Adrian Peterson, 2009? No, it should be, the, actually, wait. This guy. 2007. So, I thought it said 2017. Okay. Yeah, it should be 07 to 21. Yeah. All right. 3.3% rando. Wow. wow. Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon. Because he had one Some game where he, bold, he, man. he had, like, 300 yards one game. Is that the Corey Dillon you want? Yeah. I'm interested to see the percentage on this if it's right. It's right. Point wow. One wow. <laughs> wow. I just remember he had a really good game. One oh, time. my. Uh, all right, Giants with four. We've got to go Odell Beckham, right? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. He... For a wide receiver, that's tough. It's PPR, though. Yeah. It's a PPR. Yeah, okay. Maybe we'll Saquon. I don't know if Saquon had 40. Ooh, Saquon be close. Uh, Eli Manning make that? He, Eli yeah, Manning I feel was, like Manning, I mean, it's easier to get 40 as a quarterback. He's a, so erratic, but he has I'd go with a, I'd go with OBJ if I were you. Okay, well. That would be my guess, I think. He's right. had some big there games. There you go. Yes, seven for seven. You, you just like Odell because you guys have similar hair. That's, that's correct. Um, and beards ones. too. Who? And beards. Yes. Uh, uh, Lawrence Tynes for <laughs> Chiefs 
and Giants. Spell that last name. T Y N. Lions. Lions. Here we go. New wow. record. One point one. We need, we need just one. They don't even. He is so obscure. They don't even have his picture. <laughs> <laughs> Is he the guy that caught the ball on his head in the Super Bowl? No, that's David Tyree. That's David Tyree. Okay. Uh, right. Dolphins, Giants. This is going to be a tough one. Mm. Uh, how about O.J. Anderson? Did O.J. Anderson ever play for the O.J. Anderson? Dolphins? He played for the Car- Otis, Otis, Anderson? Otis, Otis, Otis Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. He played mm. for the Giants. Yeah. I know that because he was on Tecmo Super Bowl. Yes. Yep. Yeah. 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 Off. What was the dirt? And Dominican Sue, or the who was the other dirty player that played for the Rams, and then, and then he went to the he bounced around all over the place. He, Kurt Warner. No, the Kurt guy. Kurt Warner. The guy was an offensive lineman, and he was Richie Incognito. I don't he, think he yeah, played. Yeah, he played for the Bills. He played for the Dolphins and for the Raiders. Sure. I don't know if he played for the he Giants. He played for tons of teams. I don't yeah, know if he played for the Giants, but he played for guess. a lot of teams because. And Dominican Sue. Flaxco Burris. Uh, Steve is like, who is who are those I, guys? There's some of these guys I just I've never heard of. Dolphins, Jeff Williams, Williams, George Jeff Wilson, Raheem Mostert. Um, one more running back that I'm thinking of that played recently for the Dolphins. That I know, I believe played for the Giants. Oh wow, we got a phone a friend. Did B-R- he play for the? Dolphins? He, I know he played for the Dolphins. I just don't know if he played for the Giants. I think he Matt did. Breda currently he plays for the Giants. Yeah. Or he did last year. I know he did. And he played for the Dolphins. Are you sure about that? That sounds like a winner. I'm sure. Right, I know he played it. for Dolphins. Spell it. B R E I D A. All right. Moment of truth. Matt did a fail me. So. Yes. Got it. Nine for nine. Boom. Good nice. Ended. Good way yes. to end it. Yes. There we go. 167. Out of 19,000. I mean, can we yes. get bonus points for, for the Corey Dillon? Yeah, yes, no dude. kidding. Point one five. How many other how many other people the 2166 in front of us? Me staring at the screen is brought to you by David, Dr. David. Dr. Bill Ritzel, my eye doctor. David Ritzel. Uh, <laughs> Alright, you guys can hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, my can, can you move top notch stuff here? Hold on. There we go. My head's too big. I couldn't. Hey, I broke it because it tried to fit it to my ears because of my gigantic head. Can I just make a disclaimer first that last time we did this, I was wearing the exact same outfit? Yeah, I, I realized so this that. This is not. So I just want my audience to know, the millions of viewers out there, that I don't that wear this wife, every day. His wife won't let him get more shirts. Uh, the last time we did this, the Chiefs played on Thursday Night Football, and we're recording this on Thursday, and they also play. On Thursday Night Football tonight. So. Monica Brockman, please take this man shopping. <laughs> I do have other shirts. Uh, I just wear this whenever the Chiefs play on Thursday Night Football, which is just so happened to be twice when we did this exact same thing. Second attempt here, so see how they do at this immaculate grid. Got some interesting ones, so we'll see how it goes. So I appreciate you two uh, coming back up here for yeah, halftime for again. Thanks for having us. It's our pleasure. I feel like maybe we're being trapped today. I don't like I feel like you guys are going to do well. I, when he says they're interesting ones, that scares me. I feel like, I feel like you guys are going to do well. That's what I think. We'll see. But I know the last time it went pretty well. I know you guys got some uh, text and uh, people tuning in. The halftime show was awesome. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, my phone was blowing up. Probably similar to the way Travis Kelsey's phone was blowing up when they saw Taylor Swift at the football Very game. similar. Probably yes. very similar Very, to that. very similar. Be the first one. Here we go. All right, Twins All Star Kirby Puckett. Uh, that was the first name I. F- well, hold on, because oh, we yeah, need. Remember, we need to. Yeah. Uh, should we do Hall of Famer for that one? So do. Yeah. Let's go, Joe Mauer. Yeah, on, Joe. Mauer. If you want to, uh, Patrick, if you want to type. Yeah, you, 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 I remember last time he was typing. I know Coach Brockman would quote him, called you uh, sausage fingers. Uh, well, it's because I'm an <laughs> awkward spot. Oh. <laughs> Off to a great start typing. Yes. Okay, there's Joe Mauer. Right, uh, Kirby Puckett. Fame, Kirby Puckett. See, this uh, that was right in the wheelhouse there. Okay, and Cy Young, Johan Santana, for sure. I don't know that for sure, but he was an awful good pitcher. How about Frank Viola? I mean, <laughs> are we back to Frank Viola again. Mm. Uh, 
What about Burt by 11? Burt be home by 11? Um, did he ever win the Cy Young? No, I doubt I think it. he did. Oh, I think Frank Viola was crazy good in 1987. Like, big time good. I mean, you can go with it if you want to. I don't endorse this decision. I'm pretty confident with Frank Viola. All right. Yes, sir. There we go. Yes, sir. Three for three. That's our Manny Ramirez. Okay. I was going to say Noma. Noma Garcia Pala. Yeah. Fun fact about Nomar, you know, he was voted to the All-Star game when he didn't play in a single game during the season. Really? Yeah, because it was all fan voting at that time. Oh, well, that's cool. Carl Yastrzemski, that is fun. That's a fun fact. Uh, Cy Young for the Boston Red Sox, Tanner Houck, Gwen Balin's grandson, pride of Buffalo East, Gwen uh, Balin. Pedro. Uh, Pedro Martinez. Got it. Okay, Dodgers All-Star. <coughs> Steve Sachs. Sean Kemp. Or not Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp. Uh, Matt Kemp. Matt Kemp. Sean Kemp. <laughs> yeah. Super Sonic. Yeah. Hope Steve Sachs was an all star. Uh, hold on a second. Kershaw. Kershaw's won the all star, right? Yeah, but you also have Cy Young. I was going to put Kershaw. Cy Young's got to be Kershaw. So then you, we'll say Fernando. We know for sure that Fernando was. Right? Yeah. Fernando, Fernando. also won the Cy Young. And we welcome back here to Beverly East. Game two of this doubleheader between the Senators of Springfield and the Lancers of Beverly East. Beverly East taking game one via the walk-off, winning 5-4, to four, scored three runs in the bottom of the seventh. They will now go for the doubleheader sweep. They're now at 500-4-4. Four four. Springfield falls to 4-2 in, in the young seasons for both. We're looking up to see what soccer we have. Game two coming up. The starter for game two was game one. And Logan Faust, but game two today, it's going to be the left fielder in game one, Nas Ferris, is going to make the start here in his second game, which will be the ninth, or sorry, the eighth pitcher for Beverly to make an appearance this year. The seventh was Ree Newmeyer in game one, and so Ferris will be the eighth pitcher for Beverly to pitch this year for the Lancers. Well, Beverly in the defense, backing up Ferris in the defensive alignment, will start on the outfield going left to right, and the left field is Quinn Briscoe in center is Jalen Jones over and right is Tyreka in the infield going third to first. Austin Yates, Tommy Krimkowski, Grady Davis, and Kale Briscoe over at first. And the first pitch is going to be a hit by pitch and a runner on. And Sheff with a leadoff batter once again for Springfield. Behind the plate doing the catching is the freshman Brody Lindemann throwing, catching from Ferris, throwing. So leadoff runners on on one pitch. That's how the first game starts off. Scheffler had a good first game. He came in in relief and gave up the four runs, but he was good at the plates. Got on base twice. Stole a few bases. He had he was the uh, stole two bases and had an RBI sack fly. Second batter for Springfield is a new player with Nat Seaman game one. Enrico Veach, number eight. Pickoff move back in the first in there safely. That's Kale Briscoe over at first. Gagas is DH, and he was the first baseman in game one. The DH is for Grady Davis, who's over at second base for Bubba East. Pitch is popped up on the right side. It's in the outfield. Let's see who wants it. Tyreka coming in. Makes the catch with his right hand with the glove. Out number one. So one out for Springfield in the top half of the first as Ferris gets Beach to fly out to right. I'll bring in Seth Empson, who is the starter today here in game two. He was the first baseman in game one. He went 0 for 4, got on base twice via the air, and he actually came home and scored on the balk in the seventh inning.
Luckily for Bowie's that block pretty much did not come anything. So Lanter scored three. They would have walked it off in the Tyreka hit. If it wasn't for it. That's it. The dirt gonna get away from Lindemans doing the catching in game two. He moves from third to catcher. And he gets away and moving up a base is Scheffler. So Springfield had an opportunity just like this, but it was two outs in the first inning after a two out air and he got to first and then he got to second on a wild pitch and now here we are again starting off the game with a runner in second base this time one out for Ferris pitch from the right hander it's fouled off the right side out of play one and two Ferris this is his first varsity pitching appearance eighth Lancer pitcher to pitch this year And a 1 2. It's hit to the right side. Tyreka is under it once again. Coming in. Makes the catch. Tag it for third is Scheffler. And after making a few steps, he's going to stop and go back. That throw was on the money from Ty. And he, he was the hero at game one. Count number two. Ty so just a really good at plate appearances in every single at bat for him. He had. Four of them. He went two for three. Walk, fly out, two run double, and a two run hit that tied the game. Brings up the cleanup hitter, Ethan Rudder, who's doing the catch. He actually catched in game one as well after starting. He hits a fly ball on the left. Quinn Brest goes under for out number three. So after a leadoff hit by pitch, no hits, no walks, no runs. There's one left. We played half inning here from Bell East in game two. Lancers to bat. No score. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bell East Broadcast Network. Bottom of the first, Springfield goes scoreless in the top half after a hit by pitch to start the end on the first pitch of the game. Three straight flyouts, two to tie, and right and one to left and to quit in the left field. Which sends us to the bottom of the first. Lancers to bat for the first time in game two. We'll try and ride that hot bottom of the seventh. <coughs> Excuse me. That's how the Lancers line up here in game two. The shortstop junior. Tommy Krumkowski will start things off. He's followed once again by the senior Tyreka. Caden Kagas, the junior DH today, bats third. Batted fourth is the starter, Naz Fares. Batted fifth is the freshman catching. Brody Lindemann batted sixth is Cale Briscoe over at first. Batted seventh, the third baseman, Austin Yates. And the last two in the lineup is the senior Quinn Briscoe at left. And wrapping out is Jalen Jones, the junior in center for Bellevue. So a few changes there, obviously, the big guys. Tommy, Tide, Kegas stay in their spots, and Ferris stays in the spot as well. Same thing with Lindemann and Jayla Jones in the died spot. But Kale Briscoe, Austin Yates, Quinn Briscoe are new entries into this one. Kale Briscoe had that hit by pitch that started everything off at the bottom of the seventh for that first pitch. So he plays today at first in game two, and he'll bring up Tommy Kripkowski, who had a pretty good game one. He didn't start the way he wanted to, strike out and a fly out, but then he came back with a single and a run and a walk. Tommy has been sitting around that 300 average mark trying to get it over. and Leads off here to game two, facing a right-hander for the Senators of Springfield is the first baseman from game one, Seth Empson, who is the 300 lineup. He flew out to right for out number two in the top half of the first. He first pitch missed one of those. Second one is also going to miss. 
as Empson on the year. This is his first appearance. This is his first game of the season. So no stats on him. There's a strike two and one. He went to Hartle in the seventh inning. That was his second game. He made a start. It was the loss for Springfield. And he gets the loss again in the game one. First two miss, second, third one in there, two and one to Tommy. Short stop here in game two, the two one one. Hits it up the middle. The pitcher's there. He'll throw to first. Jim Kromkowski's retired on four pitches for out number one, one three. They'll bring in the hero from game one. Four RBIs. He came in today with one. Now he has five and came in with an average sitting at 333, seven for 21, and now make it nine for 24. A two for three. He's going to show bunt. Gets it down. Pitcher fields it. Throws to first. And he can't handle the first base, but drop the ball. Ties on. He'll take it. Tyreek, I mean, he just keeps finding ways to get on, even if it didn't involve him. We're going to give it an air to Springfield. So ties on with one out. Here is Kagus. He had, it was also here. He had the game winning hit. Out off 0 and 1. Obviously, tie with the four RBIs, but Kagus just hits the ball to the right side and does what he needs to do. Gets Tommy home from third and Lancers win. Went 1 for 4 in that game. Three ground outs to start the game off, and last half at comes through. Foul back 0 and 2. 2 Kagus. Back in the box, 0-2 coming. Check back at first, ties in there. Tie on now for the fourth time today. That's inside, did it? Get a piece, it did. Sounded like it did, and it did. Kagus is on. So the Lancers have back-to-back -back base runners. First and second one out for the cleanup hitter at Ferris. As is a starter today, he went 0 for 3. In game one, two strikeouts and a ground out to short. First pitch takes a strike 0 and 1. Springfield now at 4 and 2 and a team that's been pretty good over the last few years. They were state champions back in 2021, the team that won over 30 games. Went 25 and 10 last year, lost in the regional championship to the 4 seed in their bracket Rochester 3 to nothing. They're 6 and 10 against 618 opponents in the last five years. They made some trips down to Edwardsville and Granite City, and of course, Belleville East as well. They played Edwardsville last year and lost 11-1. That pitch is hit right to the third baseman, and he can't make the play. Ty's going to slide into third safely on the fourth place. He's going to step on third, but he beats it in time before the third baseman can step on the bag, and the Lancers have him loaded here once again with one out. So base hit for Ferris, his first of the day, he'll be pinch ran. So base is loaded, one out for Belleville East, and it's Brody Littemann who got his first career RBI on Wednesday, the 3-1 win against Oakville. And a spot here to get his second 
and give the Lancers an early lead and back up the sophomore pitching. First pitch to Brody. And Dirt 1-0. Lancers had him loaded in the bottom of the seventh. It led to three runs. One oh. It's high in there. One and one. Springfield in the their last five seasons, minus that COVID season, they didn't play anything, so you could really say six years, but the last five baseball seasons, Springfield has a combined record of 119 and 61. A good baseball team. They only finished under 500 once in those five years. There is a strike. One and two. I think they won 20 more, more games in three of those five seasons. Might be actually all four. Four or five, because they. Finished under 500, and they won state in 21 with over 30. One and two on Lindemann. The catcher today played third of the game one. He went 0 for 2, a ground out, walk, and a fly out. RBI opportunity, one and two. The pitch from Empson. Hit to the right side near the right field line in the outfield grass. It's going to be a second baseman making the play, and the Will hold Tyreek at third. It was not deep enough, too shallow. Two away. So it's up to Cale Briscoe, who Yari they'd started off in the bottom of the seventh with that hit by pitch. Bases loaded, two out. He looks here for an RBI that's looking for his first varsity RBI. Actually, second, he got one. He's looking for his first varsity hit. There's a strike going on. Looking for his first varsity run, too. He actually got it, I mean. He was looking forward to coming in today, and he got it in the first game. Let's see if he can get his first varsity hit and get the Lancers on the board. Can't strand them off. 0-2 now. As Ty is halfway between third and home. He's in a run rundown. Ty going back to third. The tag. Safe. They're going to say he missed the tag. Ty's in there safely. Man, at least he's back in there. That was dangerous. Almost ran themselves an out. Number three. And it's 0-2 on Kale. Two on Kale. To the pitch. Swing and a miss and Seth Epson after the bases get loaded. He gets out of it. Again, the last two Lancer batters on a pop out and a strikeout. After a hit by pitch, air and a hit. Lancer strand him loaded. We're going to the second inning. One in it through for Bevel East. Springfield zero. Bevel East zero. This is Lancer Baseball, the Bevel East Broadcast Network. One in three, our 
Second game of this doubleheader, no score between Springfield and Belleville East, and walking down to bat here to start the second is Carter Cruz, the fifth hitter in the lineup for Springfield. So Cruz is up, and the umpire is checking with the coach down the third base line for Springfield, and now Cruz will makes his entrance back up. The five, six, seven Cruz, Strube, and Hartle do up for the Senators. Cruz, in game one, was the two hitter. He went 0 for three, two ground outs, a pop out, and a walk, and now. I think we're good to go now. There's a home plate up higher. Get some things arranged. We're ready to go. As Fair is back out for his second inning. He had a hit by pitch to start the inning. Able to get three straight fly outs. The sophomore making his varsity debut pitching. First pitch misses. He start the second. It's 1-0 to the right-handed batter. The right fielder today in Cruz versus Springfield. That ball has popped up and it goes foul. 1-1. Springfield scored four runs in game one, only on four hits. One was scored by a balk that was in the seventh inning. That's outside. Twenty one goes to count. Lancers committed two errors in the first game. That ball's popped up in the left side. Foul territory. Austin Yates and a catcher to bit there. It's Yates putting the glove up. He makes the play near the center dugout for out number one. Good start to it for Ferris. He's retired four straight center batters now after the leadoff batter of the game. Got on. He'll bring in now the center fielder Jeff Strom, who had an RBI in game one. It's that one back up the middle. Second baseman Davis is there. He throws to first and retired on one pitch for out number two. Ferris, good start here. Five straight retired. It's the first ground out he's got, and he'll bring in the six hitter now. Sam Hartle came in and Got the loss pitching in the first game. He plays first after starting the day catching. There's a strike going one for Ferris. Lancers in the bottom of the second after stranding the bases loaded. It'll be the bottom part of the order, 7-8-9. Yates, Gwyn, Briscoe, and Jones. That ball's popped up right side near the first baseline. Making the play is Cale Briscoe. At first base, a 1-2-3 by Ferris. He's retired six straight centers. No runs, no hits, no errors, no walks. On the left, one and a half through for Bell East. No score, Lancer to bat. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bell East Broadcast. No, we'll go right back.
We start the bottom of the second. No score here through one and a half. Austin Yates is the leadoff hitter, and he fouls off the first pitch. 0-1-1. And as fair as has went, six straight retired. He had the leadoff guy to start the game, get on, and he's retired six straight center batters. We play in the bottom of the second. Lancers had the bases loaded, one out. And the bottom of the first could not bring home anybody. A wasted opportunity. They had bases loaded, one out in the bottom of the seventh of game one, brought in three, but unable to bring any in this time. It was bases loaded, one out after leadoff ground out by Tommy Kromkowski, and then Rika got on, reached on an air. Kegis hit by pitch. Ferris base hit, and then Lindemann popped out, and Briscoe, Kale Briscoe struck out. It'll be Yates, Quid, Briscoe, and Jayla Jones following Austin here. Do up. That ball is going to be fouled back by Eight, seven, eight, nine, do up in this Lancer lineup. Here in the bottom of the second. Lancers won the first game five to four to get to four and four now on the season. So when they're at two and two. So won four straight games now. Great last great week here for Bevel East and had a tough start against some very tough teams. They had to play Juliet West, open up the year, a good team, and then normal, a, only a 2 nothing loss to one of the, a ranked team in the state. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss, good. Slider by Empson. Get Yates, he fooled him. That's K number two and out number one here in the second. Retired on five pitches is Yates. So one out, I'll bring in Quinn Briscoe, the brother of Kale, who hit last inning. First pitch to Quinn takes a strike going on. The normal, I remember coming in that game, they already played three games before they played the Lancers, and they scored a total of 30 runs in those three games. Lancers held them to two. Swing and a miss. 0-2, oh and, and they lost one nothing to Mascoot on the road, and then a 10-2 loss to Slew High. And after that, the Lancers have been rolling this week. Win over Cary Grove in a non-conference win at Marion. Then they win Wednesday against Oakville. Win yesterday against Granite City. And a win here in game one over Springfield. The pitching has been very, very good. And the offense starting to get there. Still probably work to do. But a good sight for the offense to score five and a walk-off win. As a 0-2 to Briscoe, the pitch. Swing and a miss. It's in the dirt. Drop third strike. They'll get it down to first, and Briscoe will just jog it out for out number two. Three straight Ks for Empson. He's retired four straight Lancer batters. Now bring in Jalen Jones. He was huge in the first game. Takes a pitch for a ball, 1-0. Jalen in game one went one for three, ground out, single run, and a fly out. And a fly out to left in the bottom of the seventh. It was a great play by the left fielder. Could easily been extra bases. There's a strike, one and one. Springfield in the top of the third, 8-9-1, due up for them. Jones hits that to the left side. Third baseman's there. He'll throw it to first to Jones. I think he's safe. He is. He beat it. Jones shows off the speed for a two-out single. Lancers have two-out life here in the second. So the Lancers had two-out magic in the bottom of the fifth, and it was Jalen Jones getting on with a two-out hit that started everything. They went to the top of the order. Kripkowski hit one right, so we'll see if we get the same thing to happen here. Jones, his second hit of the day. He's two for four total. So here's Kremkowski coming up. Check back at first in there safely it is Jones. Kremkowski, 0 for 1. He grounded out to the pitcher. Episode first time up. A 
with a strike going to one to Tommy. Simpson and Wade is. Kripkowski's in the box. Wade to bring it home. They all want. Tommy swing and a miss 0-2. So, so as I said, Springfield 8-9-1 will be up. It'll be Tyler Elliott, Jude Romano, and then followed by Bodie Scheffler at the top part of the order. 0-2. Ebson looking for his fourth strikeout at his third of the inning, and that throw is going to get away, trying to pick off Jones at first. That's all the way to the fence. Jones is going to take two on that. He gets to third. All right. That makes things a little easier for Tommy. See the base hit now. Get the Lancers on the board. First air of the day by Springfield. Sorry, second day of the air by second air of the day by Springfield. Had one in the first. Now Tommy a spot. To give the Lancers the lead at 0-2. Pitch to Kripkowski, hits that one, a little blooper to the left center, that ball's carrying a little bit, that ball is going to get down, that's a base hit for Tommy, he's got a double, he wants three, Kripkowski will get the stop sides and he slides in the third with an RBI triple, Kripkowski makes it one up to Bevel East, his second RBI of the year, how about that Tommy, one nothing Bevel East, take advantage of the throw and error and it's one nothing, and we still got a runner at third. RBI triple by Kripkowski. Lancers now lead 1-0 after having the bases loaded in the second inning. Could not score. They've scored one here, and now Tyrica's trying to continue it. Hits that in center field, hard head ball, and that ball's going to get down. Tyrica's fifth RBI of the day, 2-0 Bevel East. How about Tyrica's bat today? That's the fifth time he's on base. My goodness, Ty. Do nothing, and J.D. Kagan now up is going to get hit by the pitch. So the Lancers will have first and second two on now after that. So Kegas, that's the second time he's been hit by a pitch, too. Got hit by the pitch in the first, and Lancers ain't done yet. So now as fair as who can help out his own call as the starter today, he singled first time up. He's got two on, two out. Hits that one in the left center. Left fielder's moving back. I think that's going to go over his head. It does. One run will score. Here comes rounded third, Kegas. Wiggs will give him the sign to come home, and he will score. A two-run double by Ferris, who helps out his own cause. 4 nothing, Bevel East, a four spot here in the second. The offense is alive here in game two. The two out hitting. Five straight hits by Bevel East, or five straight runners by Bevel East. Ray Neumeyer will pinch run at second for Ferris, the starter. RBI is in the inning by Kripkowski, Rika and two by Ferris. It's 4 nothing. There's still a runner at scoring position at second here for Brody Lindemann, who's trying to join in. He had an opportunity to do so in the first with the bases loaded, and he popped out for out number two, but he has a spot here to bring home. Neumeyer pinch running for Ferris at second. And it's all came with two outs. That's how it worked in the fifth inning of game one. And it all start the Jalen Jones single, and it's Kropkowski and Rika Rike followed. And the same thing's happened here. Jode singled, and Kromkowski followed with an RBI triple, and then Rika RBI single hit by pitch, and then a two-run double by Ferris. Let him in here. Looking for his second RBI. See if he can 
Bring in Neumeyer from second. He's got some speed. Four nothing here in the second. Emerson steps off after talking with his coach on a mound visit. Trying to get him out of there. They got a pitcher throwing down the left field line in the bullpen. He'll be spilling soon at the end of the day for Emson. His first appearance of the year. Not the way he wanted to start. The first pitch. Fouled off by Lindemann 0 1. That pitch is hit to the left side. That ball's going to get through for a base hit. Neumeier's rounded third. Left fielder picks it up. He'll fire it in. The throw's going to be late. Neumeier scores from second. An RBI single for Brody Lindemann. His first hit of the day. His first RBI second of the year. And the Lancers make it 5 nothing here in the second. It's a 5 spot on the board. Six straight guys have got to the base paths here with two outs. They've gotten on, five of them hits, one hit by pitch, and it's 5 nothing here. They've got to Empson, and now that might be the end of the day for Empson as the coaches for Springfield has left the dugout. He's coming back out for the second time here in the inning, and he's taking the game ball from Empson. His day's done after only one and two-thirds. We have a pitching change. We'll tell you about it next year after a break. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bellies Broadcast Network. Welcome back here for Bellies. Bob of the second, two outs for the Lancers will put up a five spot here in the second. The offense have sco has scored eight runs in the last three innings and ten runs in the last five. They've been really starting to hit the ball here and it's really came in the second inning. They pulled the starter, Seth Ibsen, who only went one and two-thirds. He's responsible for runner at first. He's given up all five runs. And Springfield will go to their DH from game one. The pitcher, a sophomore. Lucas Richardson. This is his second appearance on the year. He's 0-0. He's pitched in one inning. In that one appearance, he gave up one hit, no runs, no walks, two strikeouts. That hit was a double. Comes in here in relief for Empson. The book's still out on him. Off for second, and it's going to be a stolen base for Brody Lindemann. So the Lancers keep attacking. They're going to be aggressive with two out and try and get some more. Lindemann takes second, and here we go again. A runner in scored position. We'll see if Cale Briscoe at the plate can avenge a strikeout. The base is loaded. Lindemann made it out in the bottom of the first with the base is loaded. Comes through this time, his second time up, and we'll see if the same thing can happen for Cale Briscoe. He struck out for out number three. Fouls that one off out of play, one and one. RBIs here in this inning by... Kramkowski, Rika, two by Ferris, and one by Lindemann. They've had six straight guys get on base. I'll start with that Jones two-out hit. Kramkowski hit one over the 
Center field is head, runners off for third. That's Lindemann. That's going to get through. That's another base hit, and Lindemann's easily going to score. The hit and run works, and it's 6 0. Bubble East. Cale Briscoe greets Richardson out of the pen with an RBI single. This will be the 10th ba batter of the inning for Bubble East. Briscoe was the ninth. And 6 0. Six runs in the inning on six hits and a hit by pitch. So now here's Austin Yates. He started off the inning with a strikeout. So both Lindemann and Briscoe avenge their outs with the bases loaded in the first. Good RBIs here in the second. First pitch misses the Yates 1-0. 6-0 Lancers here in the bottom of the second. All came here in the bottom half of this inning. 1-0 is hitting the right center. Austin Yates has a hit. Frisco will stay put at second. The Lancers ain't done yet. First and second, two out. will bring in Quentin Briscoe now. He also struck out. Earlier this inning, it was the second out. Let's see what he can do the same thing Yates just did. Yates is now two for six. That's his second hit of the season. Risco swinging a miss. 0 and 1. Quinton on the year coming in. Batting 222, two for nine. So now two for ten with two walks. Good take by Quinn, one and one. Eleventh batter of the inning for Bubba East. Six runs, two on the base paths, two outs, and one man up. That gets away. Everyone's going to move up a base. Going to third. Briscoe, second is Yates. We'll see if Quinn can bring him in. He had three RBIs earlier this week. See if he can get some here. He's got two waiting to be brought in at second and third. Two on. That ball's hit. In a right center. Center fielder, right fielder going back. Center field trying to lay it out for it. He can't make the play. One run will score. Here comes Yates. Make it two. Briscoe's in a second slide. It's a two-run double. It's an eighth spot here in the second, and they're still not done. The Lancers just continue to hit. This is wow. The offense has really came out here in the second. Briscoe, RBI's number four and number five. 8 nothing, and another runner in scoring position. Two outs for Jayla Jones. He was the man that got this parade going. Two outs, single. He takes a pitch outside, 1-0. Eight runs in this second in all with two outs. Nine straight guys have came to the plate and got on base. Oh, and this is 2-0, oh, the 12th batter of the inning for Bevel East. Fouled off 2-1. Two on. That ball's hitting the center. High fly ball. Center fielder moving in a few steps is under it. He makes the play. The Lancers put up an eight spot here in the second. Huge lead. And Ferris will get back to work in the third. 12 men come to the plate. Eight score. The Lancers strand one behind. Eight hits in the inning. 
We go to the second or third inning, and it works through two. Bevel East 8, Springfield 0. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bevel East Broadcast Network. Start the top of the third, game two of this double hunter. Beverly's taking game one, five to four. The lead game two over the centers of Springfield, eight nothing. Steve Stock with the first pitch to start the third as they ground down with eight nine one to up for the Senators. Tyler Elliott grounds out the shortstop Kripkowski on one pitch. Out number one. Lancers eight nothing lead. All eight runs scored in the bottom of the second. And after that second into the scoreboard on runs, hits, and airs, looks like this for the visitors at Springfield. 0 0 2 for Pebble East. It's 8 9 0. Eight runs on eight hits and a hit by pitch in that second inning. Also, an air that got Joe from first to third. 2 0. The first two have missed to the nine hitter in the Springfield lineup in Drew Romanto, who's playing center field here. It's that one right side out of play. Two and one. Romanto in game one. Went 0 for 2. Two walks, two strikeouts. Springfield work to do after being down by eight. And it's got to be huge for a sophomore making his first varsity appearance pitching to have an eight run lead. I mean, you got to feel pretty good. I mean, it's a lot of runs to work with. Three one. Fouled back three and two. He's hit the leadoff hitter on the first pitch, and then he's retired seven straight. Senator batters, three fly outs, a pop out, ground out, another pop out, another ground out. Three, two, full count the pitch. Just missed on that one. Ball four. That's his first walk, second base runner allowed here as we play at the top of the third. One out walk. Brody Scheffler started off the game with a hit by pitch. He steps in for the second time. One on, one out. It's fouled off 0 1. Cabrera still looking for his first varsity strikeout. Allows via contact. There's a strike, and he's he's ahead 0-2. He could get it here. What strike away from doing that? He helped his own cause out too in the both innings. He had a single in the first, got left at first, and then a two-run double last inning. Doing it all. That pitch is hit foul. Only a sophomore. Coming on the scene, doing pretty good. He had a was key in the win Wednesday against Oakville. Here he is here. That pitch is going to get away. Just threw it away outside and goes to the backstop. A little bit will get there, but moving up a base is Ramato on the wild pitch. A 
on that second one out now. One, two count. Ferris fires. That ball's hit. Left field, that's going to go way foul and way out of play. Another one, two. That ball's hit. High fly ball on the left center. Who wants it? Center fielder. Jones calls off. Briscoe comes in and makes the play. Out number two. Battles after the one-out walk. Need one more here. All up to Rico Beach here with two outs for Springfield. Trying to get on the board. Beach flew out to right. First time up. Good block by Lindemann, keeps it in front. Ball one. Lancers at the bottom of the third will have the top part of the order. One, two, three, Kropkowski, Rika, and Kagas. Through the first times through, they have got on base a total of four times. Two RBIs through the first three hitters. That ball's roped in a left field. Briscoe's going back near the fence. That ball's deep and it's going to hop off. That's going to be a an RBI, one run will score. Going into second is Veach, and that's their first hit. It's the first run for Springfield. They're on the board here in the third. RBI double. Bringing in Romano from second. So Springfield trying to rally back. They're on the board. It's 8-1 to one here in the third. But still a runner at second, two out. Dirt. For Beach, that is his third RBI of the year. Bringing home the runner from second on the double. Now here is Empson, the pitcher, got pulled in the second. Pitch. One and one. one at Empson. Only had five outs in his first ever appearance of the year. Gave up six earned. He went one and two thirds, three Ks, no walks, six hits, six earned runs with two hit by pitches. They always got to him. They got to Richardson as well. He's given up two. One one. Balls hits to the right side near the line. Let's see what's in Briscoe. In foul territory, running for it up. It's gonna be the second baseman making the play. Or sorry, yeah, second baseman Davis making the play. Well, Springfield gets on the board after a walk and an RBI double. One hit, one run, one walk, one left, no errors. We play two and a half. Beverly East has a seven run advantage. It's eight to one. Bottom third we go. This is Lancer baseball. All the Beverly East broadcast over.
Lancers bat in the bottom of third. Let's see if they could add on to an eight-run second. That'd be good. Get some more runs here. After Springfield scored one in the top half of the third, it's an eight-one ball game. Bottom three, top part of the order for Bell, at least one, two, three. Kripkowski, Rika, Kagan. Richardson is back out there for another inning of work after coming in relief, getting the last out, but he gave up two before that. And Lancers have an eight-to-one advantage. Kripkowski, a big part of it. He was the second hitter that got on. He had an RBI triple bringing to Jones. That's hit popped up. Outfield grass, second baseman puts the glove up, and Kripkowski's retired for out number one here to start the third. They'll bring in the second hitter of the lineup, Ty Rika. Right field today. He is one for two. Reached on an air and an RBI single. Takes a pitch outside, 1-0. Well, here on tie. <laughs> Toss that one back two and one. Ty takes a ball three and one. He's had a great day at the play. He's been taking very, very good pitches and just able to just have some good at bats. That ball is hit down the left field line. This ball's got some carry to it. And the left fielder makes the play on the track for out number two and able to track that one down. As Ty put a carry in that one, just couldn't get enough of it to get over. Two out. Katie Kagus is up, but he's going to be pinch hit by Grady Davis. The old pinch hit for Kagus, who's 0 for 0 with two hit by pitches today here in the second game. That one misses. 2-0 to Davis. 8-1, to Lancers bottom three here. That misses 3 0. As Ferris is on deck, he is 2 for 2. Single, double, two RBIs. Starter today. It's ball four. Four pitch walk. Davis just comes in from the bench, pinch hits, and he gets a four pitch walk just like that. Double East has been a killer today with two outs. Can't allow a two-out walk. And let's see if the Lancers could do it again. They brought in three in the fifth with two outs. Or two in the fifth with two out. In game one, they brought in eight in the second with two out. This is high one at Ferris. He was a big part. That two-run double last inning. Lancers have nine hits on the scoreboard here. That ball's hit. Right side, foul territory. First baseman makes the play. Well, Lancers after a two-out walk, strand one. One walk, no hits, no runs, no errors. One left. We played three for Bell East. Lancers lead 8-1 to one, on to the fourth. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bell East Broadcast Noah.
Great, it's through. Lancers have an 8-1 lead here over Springfield in game two. Now Spare is back out for his fourth inning of work. He's threw it at the plate, two for three. He's only given up one or one, in, one run through three innings on the mound. As we start playing the top of the fourth. Still looking for his first strikeout of the day, but he's been able to get out still, which is the big thing. That's outside 1-0 and to the 4-5-6 part of the order for Springfield. That's going to be Ethan Rudder start things off, followed by Carter Cruz and Jeff Sturm. There's a strike 1-1. One and one. Rudder flew out to left at Briscoe to end the first inning. Pitch. It's outside 2-1. and one. Swing and a miss, two and two. See if we get that first varsity strikeout here. Still hasn't got it yet. The sophomore making his first appearance today. Two two. Popped up. Behind the plate, let him in near the net, and he'll just let that go if it goes out of play. Two, two, let's see if he can get it. Pitch. Foul tip, able to stay alive and rudder. Goes down and gets back up. Looks like he went off his foot or his ankle around that area. He's going to walk it off. It looks like he's going to be all right. We're 2-2 two, two coming here. All evened up. Two straight fouled off by the catcher here to game two. Oh, for one of the day. 2-2, two, two. Ferris looks in and fires. And the dirt trying to give him a chase. Three and two. Ferris had a one out walk given up last inning. That came back to haunt up, scored on a RBI double by Feach with two out. Full count, 3-2. That ball's hit to left field near the line. Coming in is Briscoe and foul territory to let that one go. Payoff pitch coming here. 3-2. Pitch. There it is. His first ever varsity strikeout for Ferris. Is a strikeout looking out number one here the four. Good way to start the fourth inning. First strike of the day, and out number one of the fourth, the Brigham Cruz. He popped out to Yates in foul territory first time up. He swings and misses 0 1. Pitch. Play here in the fourth inning. Swing and misses 1 and 1. Eight and a second by East, one and a third by Springfield. There's a strike on the outside part, one and two. Let's see if we go back to back here to start the fourth. One, two. That ball's hit in the right center, and I thought about giving a play was Davis. He tried to leap up there, but it's going to drop in front of Tyreka for a base hit. It's a one-out knock, and second of the day for Springfield. Try to get something going down by seven. They play on the fourth. Six, Jeff, Sturm. Bring Jeff Sturm, who got a RBI single in game one. It was the first run of the game for Springfield. Came in the second inning with the bases loaded. Throw down a first in there safely is Cruz. That ball set on the first pitch to left field. Briscoe, move it back, move it back, move it back. He's there. Out number two. One pitch, one out for Ferris and for out number two. The 
two away. It looks like we're going to get a pitch hitter, which will be Richardson, which will hit for Hartle's spot. It's 0 for 1. Our check back at first in there safely. Pitch. It's in the dirt. Oh no, Lancer's in the bottom of the fourth. We'll have five, six, seven. Little bit. Cal Briscoe and Yates. It's outside two and zero. Oh. Pitch, hit it to the left side. Kripkowski plays off a hop. Throw to first. Briscoe with the reach. He's got it. Out number three. After a hit, no walks, no runs, no errors. One left. We've played three and a half. We're halfway through this one. Lancer's own 8 1 lead. This is Lancer Baseball. I'm always broadcast Oracle. We'll be right back. We're going to have through, halfway through in this one, and the Lancers hold it on to a seven-run lead as we play in the bottom of the fourth. Brody Linneman starts to off. He hits the first pitch over in right field, a quick, easy fly ball. One pitch, one out, caught by the right fielder in Cruz for out number one. Linneman retired for the second time today. So a quick start for Richardson, who settled down after the wild second inning. Coming in relief, he gave up two, but he shut the Lancers down only... Giving up one base throw to the third, a two-out walk, and he's going to hit Briscoe. And that's the second time Kale Briscoe's been hit today. That was a breaking ball. He got hit in the bottom of the seventh and gets hit here. That's the fourth hit by pitch today for Battle East. He'll take the base runner. Third time he's been on base today. Second time in this game he's been on base. He's one for two. Number 28, Austin Yates. So Lancers, a one-out base runner. Austin Yates steps in. Struck out first time, singled the last time. Went for two, swing and a miss, 0-1. That was both in the second inning. So Lancers batted around, had 12 men come to the plate. The 0-1. That ball's hit. In a left field, I think that's going to down a hit. Yes. Yates has a hit. There you go. He's two for three. Lancers are just really seeing the ball in this game. I, I they, They've done really well. And it's about time the offense has broke through. We've been waiting for it. Kind of the one thing I like, the Julia West game, the opening day, had opportunities. They only got home, I think it was one or two runs in that game. And it's kind of frustrating because you had all these opportunities and 
could have come through, but yeah, you fast forward today, they've had opportunities. They're coming through. Here is Briscoe. Takes a pitch low. One of Lantern's had three, uh, three run, two run score on three straight hits in the fifth inning in game one. That was an opportunity that came through. And obviously, base slow to the seventh, they came through. And then first inning could have come through, but the two guys that made the two outs come back and get two RBIs in the second. So that's a good story. That's going to miss two and out of Quinn. Briscoe is up, who got a two run double. He added on to the fun. He was the last hit in that second inning. He brought in. Briscoe and Yates who are on the base paths now. So can he do the same thing? 2 and out. Richardson looks in. And fires. That is good to miss. 3 and out. Four pitch walk. Load the bases for Jayla, Do Jayla Jones who would like to do what he did in the second inning to get a base hit. That ball's hitting the right center. That ball's down. Coming around third. Here comes Cale Briscoe. He will score back in the second. Slide in safely. It's the eight, it's nine, one. Lancers. Briscoe's got three RBIs today. Nine, one. Good guys here in the third, fourth. The boys are really starting to hit. A 3 0. Why not swing throw? And he's going to pitch like that to hit it. Hit in the right center for a hit. That's the 11th hit today by Beville East. And with two on one out, Jones steps in. He is one for two. Single run and a fly out. And that fly out, the good hit one, and he had a good hit one in the seventh in game one as well. There's a strike out one from Richardson. One the first game via the walk off, now up by eight in game two. Need two more here. I would force a top of the fifth on a run rule. One and one. Lancers' last run rule win game last year in conference play against Collinsville. A 10 0 win at the back end of the season. That was I think the third and last game of the regular season. One on. There's a pitch right on the outside part. Two and two to Jones. I'll leave it up. Two two. That ball's hit to center. Center fielder. Zuttert puts the glove up for out number two. We'll go to Kripkowski now, trying to break home some more with two out. Oh, we're going to have a pinch hitter for Kripkowski. So it'll be Luke Monroe will be the pinch hitter for Tommy Kripkowski. Throws one of the pitchers, one of the pitched in three games and for him hitted. This is going to be his first plate appearance of the year. So he has a spot to get his first varsity hit, his first varsity RBI, and his first varsity plate appearance. The junior. Hits that. Up the middle. Base hit. Yates will get the stop sign. So they'll load him up with Luke Monroe. First pitch at the varsity level. Hits it right up the middle for a base hit for his first career hit. How about that? And they're loaded. It'll be Logan Faust pitch in for Tyreka. So Coach Wiggs empty the bench here. Let's see if he can get a hit here. He went 0 for 1 in the first game that he pitched. Get the no decision. The win went to Newmeyer. And the loss went to Hartle. Faust still looking for his first varsity career hit. First Varsity RBI. He's got him loaded. Two out. Pitch. Hits it to the right side. First baseman plays it. He'll easily step on the bag with his left foot. And Lancers will strand the bases loaded. They do score one. And they get the run back from the third inning. After three hits in the inning. A hit by pitch. 
It's 9-1, Lancers through four. This is Lancer Baseball, fifth and next year on the Valley East Broadcast Network. We're back here from Beville East. Game two of the doubleheader between Springfield Senators and the Beville East Lancers. Lancers hold, away, hold on to a 9-1 lead over the Senators. They took the first game via the walk-off winning 5-4. Welcome back here to game two. Steven Stocker with you. Glad to have you along on a Saturday afternoon. Watching some Lancer baseball. Always better when you're winning. And when you're winning by 8. 9-1 here in the fifth. And today is over for the starter today. Naz Ferris, who pitched very well in his line for a second. But the new pitcher for Beville East is a senior Number 17, Dalton Elgrim, who is making his first varsity appearance. So the Lancers have made debuts. This is the 10th pitcher for Beville East this season. That's to the right side, popped up and making the play. This is the second baseman for out number one. So he gets the first guy retired in Elliott, which is 8-9-1 new up for Springfield. Here in the fifth inning. So first at bat, first out. All on one pitch. On the scoreboard, and run tits and errors through four innings for the visitors and the Senators. 1 2 2 for Beville East, 9 1, 9 11 0, actually. 11 hits for the boys. So they had eight in the first inning, sorry, eight in the second inning, one in the first inning, zero in the third inning, two in the fourth, fourth inning. That's inside that one. Missed, almost got a piece of the. Batter in Romano, who's 0 for 0 with a walk and a run. There's a strike one and two. That gets away. Two and two now. All even up. Coach Wiggs been empty in his pitch. Went to Monroe to pitch hit for Kripkowski. And Faust pitch hit for Rika. Davis was the one that pitch hit for Kegis in the third inning. There's the first ever varsity strikeout for Elmgren. He's going to get here with two outs. He's got the first two guys here. Retire. Two away. So back to the top of the order for Springfield. They'll bring in Brody Scheffler, the second baseman, 0 for 1 hit by pitch and a fly out. He takes a strike 0 and 1. Oh, and this is 1 and 1. Lancers in the bottom of the fifth. That will be that 3 4 5 part of the order. Davis. 
Then Fair is a spot in Lindemann. Pitch was popped up in the infield. Let's see what's it. Alvacum's calling for it. He wants to do everything. They say he's got it. Comes in. First varsity appearance. Goes one, two, three at the strikeout. No hits, no runs, no errors, no left, no run. As we played four and a half minutes for Bevel East, it's 9-1. Bottom fifth next, this is Lance Baseball on the Bows Broadcast Network. Bottom five here for Bevel East. Lancers hold on to a 9-1 lead here at game two of the doubleheader. New pitcher to tell you about for Springfield is the right fielder Carter Cruz. He'll come into pitch as he's in relief of Lucas Richardson, who came in relief for Seth Epson, who started the game for the Senators. Richardson's line is, was three and one-thirds. He came in in the second inning and three and one-thirds pitch. He gave up, he had zero strikeouts, one walk, five hits, Four runs, three of the bird. And it's a 9-1 game with Grady Davis stepping in. He is 0 for 0. He walked first time up. And then how about this three spot, in which was Kagan started off. Davis now is hitting. Two hit by pitches and a walk between the two. First pitch from the right-hander, Cruz, is in there for a strike going away. It's a 3-4-5. It will be Davis in the fairest spot, which is Algrim now on the mound. He's on deck. And then Lindemann to follow. Coach Wiggs has been emptying the bench here, so we'll see how many more guys he goes. That's a gravel up the middle. Throw over to first, and Davis is retired on two pitches for out number one to start the fifth. Here is Obgren. He had his first varsity inning, pitching appearance, and now he'll make his first varsity at bat. So Wiggs misses 0-1. We have another... Pinch hitter on deck for Lindemann. That looks to be number five, which is Jaden Williams, a junior. I went two here on Ogram, trying to see what he can do with one out in the fifth inning. If you look at the Springfield pitchers through the first two, Empson and Richardson, that's going to hit them. Or, yeah, because they got away. So it, on base is Omgren and a one-out base. Runner. That's the fifth hit by pitch today thrown by Springfield. Three in this game alone. Two of them are Kagas. Two of them are Brisco, Kale Briscoe as well. So here is Jaded Williams, a pitch hitter. He pitch hits for Lindemann, who is doing the catching today. Jaden Williams. This will be his first varsity at bat. 
So talk about the two pitchers, Empson and Richardson combined. They only had three strikeouts. Three Lancer batters struck out. In game one, five of them, five strikeouts for the Lancer batters. You go just to, let's go to Wednesday against Oakville here, if I could go back. Ten strikeouts combined for the two pitchers for Oakville in that game. So different games offensively, and that shows you kind of the difference. Three strikeouts here at game two so far, five in game one, and then ten Wednesday against Oakville. The offense has turned it here. Eight runs, second helped. Williams, 0-2 now. The junior up. Gail Briscoe is on deck. His spot next, he is one for two, a strikeout. RBI single, hit by pitch, and a run. Good day for him. He had a run in the game one as Jaden Williams will strike out swinging on three pitches. He is retired. Out number two. So here is Kale Briscoe. Springfield in the top of the sixth. So I have two, three, four, Beach, Empson, and Rudder for the Senators. First pitch misses 1 0. Lancers technically do have the winning run up if Briscoe gets on and scores. That would be the ball game. Be up by 10, it would be a walk off. 2 0 count. So we know to Kale. Hits that to the left side. That's going to get through for a base hit. That's his second hit of the game. Lancers have two on, two out. Let's see if we can get those two. Austin Yates will step in. So Yates has had a good day today. Struck out the first time. But man, how about this adjustment? Two hits after the strikeout. Two for three today. Yates still looking for an RBI in this one. Looking for his first on the year. Strike going one to him. Scale one. Inside one and one. Yates up the middle, off the pitcher's glove. He knocked it down. Rebounds, fires to first, and Yates is retired. So the Lancers get a hit by a pitch and a single, but strand those two. We're five minutes through. The Lancers still have a 9-1 lead. We go to the six. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bellies Broadcast Network.
start play here in the top of the sixth inning. Nine one, Pebble East. Dalton Almgren out for his second inning of work. Sixth inning of play with an eight one advantage for Pebble East. Faces the two hitter in the lineup. Two three four due up for Springfield here. Starts off is Enrico Veach, the shortstop, then Seth Empson and Ethan Rudder to follow. First two have missed here, 2-0. Oh. Panthers had two on, two out, needing two to win the game. And trying the try again in the bottom of the sixth, and that will play a seven. They can win it pitching instead of hitting. Gets away, 3-0, and oh, not a good start for Umgren, who pitched very good, made quick work of the Senator batteries in the fifth, and it went one, two, three, pop out, strike out, pop out, and Umgren caught the last out as well. Popped out to the pitcher. 3-0. There is a Steerak 3-1. Pitch is hit to the right side. That ball is going to get down for a base hit. Only the third hit of the day for Springfield. They had four in game one, too. Four hits in game one, three, and here here in game two, the Lancer batters, pitchers have been very good at holding the batters off balance. I said it's a base hit to the left side. So two straight hits to start the sixth, and Springfield trying to rally here. Nobody out down by eight in the sixth. So two outs for Rudder. He's 0 for 2. Flew out to the left and then struck out last time. First pitch a strike from Almgren trying to battle back here. Fell down in the hole on the first batter, gave up a hit, and then let's have a hit here for the second batter. That ball's hit to left field. Jones coming in. Or actually not Jones, sorry. That would be Quentin Briscoe making the play. Out number one. It's been two. Switched. One away in the sixth. So Cruz will come in at bat. He was the pitcher who came in to pitch the sixth. Sorry, the fifth. And really for Richardson, the second pitcher by the Senators, and he takes a strike. He's one for two, pop out in a single back in the fourth, and that was a second hit by Springfield here in this one. It's in the dirt, good block. Throw down a second, safe. Just barely in there. Ball's hit down the left field line. That's going to go out of play. 0-2. Almgren got his first strikeout last inning. See what he can do. get a second here on 0-2. Pitch. This is 1-2. Lancers in the bottom of the sixth. It will be 8 9 1, which is Briscoe, Jones, and Monroe. It's hit foul. Gonna be fouled off. I'll let that one go out of play. Still 2 2 here. Pitch 
Two two. He got him, yes. Almgren with the K, his second of the out, and it's out number two. Two on, two out now. Two hits to start the inning, now two, now two outs. Fly out and a strikeout. I'll bring in Jeff Sturm. Sturm, who is 0 for 2, ground out and a fly out. Almgren one out away from stranding those two runners. Side 1-0. Trying to make things easier for the offense, needing two runs to win the game. At the bottom of the six, don't want to make it three. It's inside two and out. That ball gets away, a wild pitch. Everybody will move up a base. Three and out. Walked him. Four pitch walk and they'll, they'll load him up. Almgren's first walk of the outing. Hardle. Bring in Hardle here. It is 0 for 2, a fly out and a ground out. Outside 1 0. Almgren's starting to lose control of his pitches, lose the strike zone here. As here comes. Coach Kromkowski out of the dugout, and he'll give a talk to Elmgren trying to sell him down to get this last out. And he was doing fine the before this uh, last batter, and he gave up two hits, but got the next guy to fly on a strikeout. He's got two in the outing, and he's going to throw it in there. Don't need to throw balls and walk them. This on the first one here was a four pitch walk to Strom, and Five straight by Almgren. That missed. Hartle 0 for 1. Pop out today. There you go. 1 and 1. Time called. It's away on that one one. And the pitch. That's hit. Up the middle. Shortstop. Monroe will just step on the bag. And the Lancers get out of it. Almgren gave up two hits, but and at the bases loaded, but strands them. After two hits a walk. Three left. No errors. No runs. We've played five and a half. We'll see if the Lancers could walk it off. It's nine one. Needing two for the run will win. Bottom six next. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bellies Broadcast Network. Bottom six, Lancers lead by eight, needing two for a run rule win, or we'll play the seventh inning here 
as Dalton Almgren gets out of it. Bases loaded jam. Gave up the first two batters to get on base on hits and then gets an extra guy on a fly out then a strikeout. Four pitch walk. 1-0 count and battles back for a ground out and gets out of that giving up nothing. So still an eight run lead and Beverly is just trying to get those last two here. Let's go home a little early. 1-0 to Briscoe. First one missed. Quinn's had a great game. He struck out the first time up but Again, we talk about the adjustment from Austin Yates, who has got two hits since his strikeout, but Briscoe's really done it. Struck out in the second, and later on in the second, had a two-run double. And then an RBI single in the fourth. The pitch. That ball's hit. Up the middle. That's three hits on the day for Quinn. All in a row since that strikeout, and the leadoff runner's on for Pebble East. Winner runs up to the plate, and it will be Jalen Jones, the junior. He's had a good day, one for three. And it wasn't, it's not just this game. Jalen Jones had a good game one, too. Again, I talked about last year with Jones because he was a guy who was in the ninth spot as well, eight and nine. And I really thought he was really good, kind of like a secondary leadoff guy. And if you get to the bottom part of the order, get on base and have a guy on for the top part of the order, and that's how that fifth inning and the second inning all started here. First one missed from Cruz, the right fielder now in the pitch. This is his second inning of work. Lance is going to be two more. That was hit number 13 on the day. Briscoe's third. That one's fouled off one and one. 13 hits that came by Fares in the first. Second inning by Jones, Krimkowski, Rika. Fares got another one. And then Lindemann, Kale Briscoe, Austin Yates, Quinn Briscoe. Third inning, no hits. Fourth inning. Hits by Austin Yates, Quinn Briscoe, and Tommy Kremkowski. And then the fifth inning hit by Gail Briscoe again. So that's your all 13. And then not many strikeouts. Only four strikeouts on the day for Springfield through these five plus innings. And Ump's coming over to talk to the Springfield dug out as Coach Wiggs is nearby and looks like we have an injury as our great athletic trainer Aaron Kreml will come over and take a walk over there as well. So the three strikeout victims for Beville East today was Cale Briscoe in the first inning. Sorry, four strikeout victims. Cale Briscoe in the first inning, Austin Yates in the second with Quinn Briscoe, and then this most recent inning was Jaden Williams pinch in for Lindemann. So new so catcher back out there. And we resume again on a 1-1 pitch coming to Jalen Jones. And the pitch. It's inside of the breaking ball, 2-1. and one. Springfield has five hits. They only had four in the first game and on four runs, which again, one of them came on a walk, and that second inning had multiple walks in the inning from Faust. They missed two and two. Faust was good. Newmeyer was pretty good in relief as well. And obviously today, Ferris pitched solid, only giving up one and one strikeout. But man, the contact was all outs. Nice breaking ball from Cruz, and Jones is down swinging for out number one here in the sixth. When a white, I'll bring in Luke Monroe. He's pinch hitting for Kremkowski. He pinch hit back in the fourth and. Got a base hit up the middle, and he steps in trying to go two for two, trying to stay perfect. It's that right. He's perfect. Two for two. Lucas gets another one. How about that? Luke drives the one to right. So first and second one out. Lancers are in position here. To end this ball game, Logan Faust grounded out to the first baseman back in the fourth for out number three. First and second one out here for the left-handed bat and Faust. He's still looking for his first varsity hit. First pitch misses 1-0. and oh. So 
Start off with an oar. Outside two and one. Swing and a miss, two and two. I'll leave it up here on Faust. Brady Davis is on deck. He is 0 for 1. They walk in a ground out. 2 2 to Faust. Cruz looking for a second out here. Got Jones a strikeout swing. That ball's hit. In the left center. Left fielder moving back a few steps. He's going to make the play. And tag it for third. And in there safely is Briscoe. So he'll move up a base. First and third. Two out. And they'll bring in Davis. This is, as I mentioned, as I walk in the ground out, he pinch, was pinch hitter for Kegis, who is a DH. He had two hit by pitches and his two at bats. It's that one in the left center field. Center fielder coming in, stays up enough for out number three. So, Bevelis just needs three more outs to. Sweep this double under. They lead 9 to 1. We go to the seventh. This is Lancer Baseball on the Bell East Broadcast Network. Top of the seventh, the Lancers are three outs away from getting to over 500, four and four, and try and take down the centers in this doubleheader, trying to sweep this doubleheader. Won the first one, five to four. They lead here in the second, nine to one. Steven Shockley, they're glad to have you along on a Saturday afternoon for some Lancer baseball. New pitcher to tell you about, it's a left-hander, Robbie Trotter, a senior, makes his first varsity appearance. He will come in as he comes in relief for Dalton Almgren, who went two innings, two strikeouts, one walk, two hits. No runs and no hit by pitches. A good appearance for Homgren. And an 8 9 1 due up for the Senators. Tyler Elliott will start things off. He is 0 for 2 and they ground out in a pop out. 8 run game. First one misses outside 1 0. Three outs away to get to 5 and 4. Springfield fall to 4 and 3. 
There's a strike one and one. One one. Foul back one and two. Two, that's outside two and two from Trotter. Two, two. That's outside three and two. That runs full. That's ahead one and two, two straight have missed. Full count on Elliott. Jude Romanto is. Waiting on deck, he's 0 for 1. Swain and miss. Trotter comes in, first ever varsity appearance. He gets his first ever K, first battery faces for out number one. One away in the seventh. Number 10, Jude Romano will step in with one out. He's 0 for 1. Walk. The only run today for Springfield and a strikeout. Came home in the third on the RPI double by Veach. They made it an 8-1 game. Answers have scored eight in the second. Springfield responded with one in the third. Bevel East then scored one in the fourth on the scoreboard and runs hits and errors for the visitors and the Senators. 1-5-2 and for Bevel East, 9-14-0. Airless game up to this point for the Lancers. Hope to keep it that way for the last two outs. That's in low one and one. Win for Bubble East will go to Fair as he went four innings, one K, one walk, two hits, one run, one earn. Emerson will get the loss for the Senators, only going one and two thirds, three Ks, no walks, six hits, five runs, six earned. That ball's hit to the left side, and that ball is going to go in foul territory and go out of play, one and two. As Briscoe lets that one go. Two. That one misses two and two. It's fouled off. Our two two coming all even up. Two two pitch, here it is. That ball sit to the left or away foul, so uh, another one coming. Two two. Two and two, the pitch. It's hit, tapped. Trotter can't make the play. Shortstop Monroe comes in, fires to first. Throw is late, safe. A one out single for Romano. Here in the seventh inning. Back to the top of the order to go in Scheffler. He is 0 for 2 with hit by pitch today. Two more outs and the Lancers will win this one. So two more. Pitch Trotter. It's hit foul low and one. Ball's hit. Left side, Yates. Throws to second, and they got him there. They get the lead runner. Out number two. Great play by Yates to pick that one and throw it over. Two away. Latches one out of way here. Number eight, Rico Veach. 
Well, Veach will be the last to hope. He's been the big person for Springfield today. The problem for Pebble he's two for three. An RBI double, single, and a fly out today. Last hope for the centers as they're down their last out here. Down by eight. It's inside one L. That'll get away and moving up. Just going to draw go Scheffler. He'll easily take second. And one more out here. One L count on Veach. One oh. And this two and a false hit. Left side Monroe has issues feeling it. Knocks it down though. Throws to first reached by the first baseman. Briscoe is in the dirt. He'll have to go track that one down. So it'll be the Runner on, and it'll be at the corners now for the Senators here in the seventh with two out. Number one, Seth Empson. Here is Seth Empson, one for three, fly out, pop out, and a single. He started the game. The center, they're going to call it an error, so that's the first error of the game by Belleville East. Those are two outs in the seventh. Trotter trying to get this last out in this game. That's going to miss 2-0. Oh. Moving up for second. Is he going to get him? He's got him. That's a Lancer winner. How about that? It's going to end on a caught stealing, and the Lancers sweep the doubleheader. Winning game one via the walk-off 5-4. They win game two, 9-1. and one. They get to 5-4 and four in the year. Springfield falls to 4-3. and three. I'll talk about it next on our Lancer baseball post-game show.
Welcome back here into our Lancer Baseball postgame show. The boys could have done you know, winning this one by a final of 9-1. and one. They sweep the doubleheader, improving to 5-4 in the year, above 500. Five straight wins for the Lancers. I'm going to move over a little bit. Five and five and four, four st five straight wins, and spring football's fourth. We're gonna take a quick break, actually. We're gonna, we're gonna go get our player of the game interviews. Coach Wiggs joins me next. We'll be right back. This is Lancer Baseball post game show on the Billy's Broadcast Network. Welcome back into our Lancer Baseball post game show. Joined by one of our player of the game inter interviews, Game One's player of the game, Tyreek, who also had a great game too. Thanks for coming up here, taking a few minutes yeah, to join thank me. Thank you. For I mean today, I mean you, I mean you had a great game, and yeah. obviously for you, but Game One, big hero four with five RBIs. But Game Two, it just wasn't you. Everyone else was coming through as well. Yeah. Um. I mean, ABs wise, uh, just trying to think. Uh, left center gap, just they're playing, literally straight on the, on the um bases so that gap anything inside just gonna foul off till i can get a outside pitch especially that bottom of the seven you're fouling everything on right. a battle yeah it was uh well i think it was uh, you get, had behind and then you get it to right. three two and get pitched yeah. in left center just just wanted to make sure if it was up not swinging if it's away don't swing and if it's right on that edge i'm swinging so for you you're on the base pass that get the second base four four game and then uh, Caden just sends one yep. on the right side, man. I mean, that was a pretty good uh, hit, and mm -hmm. boys are going crazy over first base. Yes, sir. Uh, so game two, you know, game two, it's hitting wise was great. I mean, yeah. what's it like with the lineup in that game where everyone's coming through? Because you guys had twelve men come to the play, and at nine straight got on base. Yeah, I mean, I think with Tommy and I being on top, once once that gets rolling, yeah. everyone else just knows we got a job to do, and they do it. So. So now that's I mean it's five straight wins now right. for you guys. I mean I kind of talked about it uh, on Wednesday with uh, Brody and, and uh, Owen and then Coach mm -hmm. Wiggs of course the the offense. I mean lineup it's yeah. kind of been the problem you know a little bit the first mm -hmm. few games. You guys get it going with the yeah. pitching. You guys have everything yeah. comes together. I mean we know our pitching is spot on right now and we know like we know mm -hmm. we can hit. So I mean we just had to listen to Coach, take it serious, and finally do what we can to do. So big week next week. Conference yep. play will start Bevo West Tuesday and yep. Thursday. How do you guys capitalize off all this momentum here this week? Five straight wins and continue it or a very good Maroons team next week. Make sure – I mean, we take care of our bodies tomorrow, get ready for uh, Tuesday. I mean, just stay locked in like we are right now. Well, Ty, thanks for coming up here. Thank Congrats you. on the win. You keep doing this good stuff, man. Tyreka, one of our player of the games. We'll get a few more here. Uh, we'll get one more here for game two, and then Coach Wiggs will follow – uh, shortly here, just kind of waiting. Oh, here we go. Here's one. There we go. Here's our game two player of the game. Joined here to by our player game two player of the game, Naz Fair. Thanks for coming up here, man. How you yeah, doing? I'm doing good. How are you? You're doing good. How did how did it feel for you to make your varsity debut on the mound today? It felt great. You know, could have did maybe a little bit better on uh, pitching location wise, but yeah. I think I did pretty good overall. For you, yeah, help your calls out that uh, first inning get a hit, but second and that's through on double. What was it like hitting that second inning? Because everyone just kept 
it was line kept going. Yeah, it felt good. The energy was energy was up. I mean, yeah, felt felt good. Yeah. What's it like with the offense? Because I mean, I th- that's second game that ended was the offense. You know, we've been waiting to see where everyone comes through. You guys can really win games when everyone comes through like that. Yeah. Um, um, our offense, we're getting there with it. Yeah. We just need to stay where we're at now and keep the mindset up. Five straight wins. Big yep. week next week against Belva West. You yep. know, how do you guys continue the momentum and hopefully pull out some wins against the Maroons next week? Um, you know, we're just going to continue what we're doing. You know, keep hitting the ball, keep making plays in the defense, and yeah. For your first start, what was kind of the message Coach Weeks told you before you went out there? Um, he just said he was like, stay calm, you know, throw strikes. All right, Naz, thanks for yep, thanks thank for coming you. up here. You're awesome. Thank you. Hey, keep up the good work. So Naz Ferris is our second player of the game, and then we should be getting – Coach Wicks up here any minute. I'm not sure what he's doing. He's a busy guy. He is a busy guy. But he always, he always gives us uh, – gives me some time to uh, interview him. We're going to wait for Coach Wiggs to come up here soon and get the final lines and more. But our two player of the games interviews Tyreka and as Fares, Tyreka game one and Fares game two. So we're just waiting on uh, Coach Wiggs. Well, of course we're waiting on Coach Wiggs. <laughs> Let's get the lines for you while we wait. Bevel East. Uh, the witted pitcher today was Naz Ferris. He went four innings, one K, one walk, two hits, one run, and one hit by pitch. Dalton Emgren came in relief. He went two innings, two Ks, one walk, two hits, no runs, no error, no hit by pitches. Robbie Trotter came in and pitched the last inning. He goes one inning, one K, no walks, one hit, no runs for Belleville East. Over for Springfield, the losing pitcher for them is Seth Empson. He went one and two thirds, three Ks, no walks, six hits, five runs, six earned, two hit by pitches. Coming in relief was Lucas Richardson, and Richardson came in and pitched three and one-thirds, no Ks, one walk, five hits, four runs, three earned. Coming in lastly for Springfield was their last pitcher, the right fielder, Carter Cruz. He comes in and pitches two innings, two Ks, no walks, three hits, no uh, two runs, and two earned. Sorry, no runs, no earned. And on the scoreboard, a run sits and airs for Springfield, 1-5-1 for Bevel East, 9-14-1. And lastly joined here by our – Head coach of Belleville East Baseball, head coach Ryan Wicks. Thanks for coming up here Absolutely. and joining me after a doubleheader split or sweep. It's pretty good to pull out both of them. Feels good. To, yeah, you, you show up on Saturday, you always think sweep. You, you know, that's what you want to do. And a uh, pretty uh, emotional first game there. Yes. And then uh, – um, had a real big second inning in the second game, and that was a little less intense, but that was okay with me. Start about the uh, first game, Logan Faust kind of had that second inning, that one bat and everything else, though. He was really good. I mean, first six batters, he was making quick work of them. Yeah, no doubt. He had good stuff today. Uh, a handful of walks, and the, the walks contributed to his trouble there in that second when they scored a couple runs. But uh, then he worked out of it and then worked two, I think, two scoreless after that and did, did really well for us. So he yep. – you know, both starters did a good job on the mound, giving us what we needed. You look at Newmeyer comes in relief. He, I think he did pretty good besides that uh, balk, which, you know, interesting, you know. But after that, he was still very yeah. good. You take that away. It was first outing uh, yes. for varsity. Um, you know, he came in first and second and no out. So he was put immediately into a tough spot and did good battling through it. Um, and I liked – and then once he settled in, you know, he, he looked, he looked uh, really comfortable later on in the game. Talk about the senior Tyreek, one of those guys you're kind of relying on this year to do things. What he did today, four RBIs in game one. I mean, he's huge. Yeah, a hu- a seventh inning, really, honestly, uh, really good at bats from um, uh, several guys. But Ty sticks out because it was a had to be an eight or nine yes. pitch at bat. Yes. Several foul balls with the bases loaded there. Uh, you know, so lots of other guys contributed, but Ty's kind of sticks out because that was a game tying hit too that he got there after that long at bat. You look in the fifth inning, and Jalen Jones got everything started. I mean, he's was really good out of the ninth spot. He started everything off in the fifth, started everything off in game two in the second. Absolutely, yeah. He, he's he's a good baseball player. He, he's a good athlete. He's fast. He's a good hitter. He, he can throw. He can play infield. He can play outfield. He, we, we like what Jalen does for us. And then Kanan Kagus does, gets that game winning hit in the seventh inning and end everything off. Yeah, game, infield's in. You know, all he has to do there is put the ball in play, which is exactly what he does. And, you know, we win the game, and it was exciting. Kind of look at game one, game two overall. I just want to point out a stat to you real quick. Five strikeouts in game one from you guys. Game two, five strikeouts. I went back during the game, looked at Oakville. That was ten strikeouts on Wednesday. So that's yep. a huge difference yeah. from Wednesday to today. We tell you, you tell the guys all the time, you put the ball in play and make the other team handle it, and good things happen. Um, you know, going back to the Oakville game, we put the ball in play a couple of times, and they made some mistakes, and we get some runs out of it. Same thing here, like, you know, 
Ty has a really good at bat and puts the ball in play. Kagus puts the ball in play. Tommy put the ball in play in that inning. I mean, a lot of just you, you got to put pressure on the defense as much as you can. Go to game two. You go to three guys making their varsity debuts, Ferris, Almgren, and Trotter. All did very, very really good. good. Really impressed with all three of them. They came in, strike throwing. Um, you know, Nas obviously had a good day at the plate as well, yes. honestly. But uh, it starts with him on the mound, and he set the tone there with his first four innings. So we go to that second inning where you guys score eight runs. I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone else expected eight runs that inning. But no. it, it, two outs, and it just started coming. Until, you know, two outs, nobody on. Jalen gets an infield hit, and then, you know, we, we start hitting the ball. And I think Kegas got hit, but everyone else yes. was, was yep. getting base hits. You know, yep. they, they were earning it by, by having good swings and putting the ball in the outfield. The Briscoe brothers were pretty good today. They had a – Four total RBIs between those two. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, I, didn't, I haven't looked close at the book yet, but they, they give us some good at-bats. Yeah. Uh, and then this, I mean, offense, I mean, it kind of talked about it Wednesday when you guys just mentioned put the ball in play. That's what you guys did. To me, when you guys can back up the pitching, because the pitching has been good so mm -hmm. far, we back up with this type of offense, I feel like it's – guys are a tough team to beat from the even when we were 0 four our pitching and defense was, was pretty good that wasn't letting us down it was it was struggling at the plate and striking out um some different guys have gotten opportunities and taken advantage of them and and you know when our offense can play like this then we could be a really good team because then we have all three facets of the game pitching defense and offense so so big week next week guys will begin conference play at west tuesday make the return game here at home thursday what are you looking to see hopefully yeah. to continue this win streak consistency you know good starting pitching which you know we're going to get we're going to get good defense and then we got to battle at the plate we got to grind out at bats put pressure on the other team uh, all week long we play three different four games three different teams so we got to make sure we keep putting pressure on them well coach thanks for thank you up here as always appreciate it let's keep winning thanks for having me Tyreek and as fair as our player of the games, Coach Wiggs, our interview is always with the head coach after a great win and a great sweep for the boys. Thanks for them three for joining me here on a doubleheader sweep for the Lancers getting it done over the Senators of Springfield. Came in four and one, they leave four and three. Beville East leaves three or enters three and four, they leave five and four. What a great day for Beville East. That second inning is that play of the game. I, I'm going to kind of a lot to show you so I uh well, well let's go play of the game we'll give it to Naz Ferris so let's take a break we'll give you that uh play of the game it's from the bottom of the second we'll be back one last break here on Atlanta baseball pregame show P post game show I'm a, I want to go home that's what I want to do what I no, we'll be back All right, we welcome back here to Beville East. It's time, it's time for your play of the game. It's going to be the bottom of the second. You could really go the whole bottom of the second, which I would, but it's too much to show you. So we'll cut it down to one play, and it's Naz Ferris' two-run double. I bust this thing open to four. 
Uh, this is how it looked and sounded here in the bottom of the second. You're on the Let's Bell Broadcast Network. Got hit by the pitch in the first, and Lancers ain't done yet. As Ferris, who can help out his own call as the starter today, he's singled first time up. He's got two on, two out. Hits that one in the left center. Left fielder's moving back. I think that's going to go over his head. It does. One run will score. Here it comes round at third. Kagus. Wiggs will give him the sign to come home, and he will score. A two-run double by Ferris, who helps out his own cause. Four, nothing. Bevel East, a four spot here in the second. The offense is alive here in game two. The two out hitting. Five. Play the game from the bottom of the second. Lanterns get done. Nine to one in a great weekend. Doubleheader sweep for the Lancers. Getting things done here. Taking care of business. Five straight wins. And they 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 played some hard baseball this week. And I very proud of the boys. They they have worked really hard. And Tyreek is one of them. Big senior on this team. Kromkowski was really good. Uh, Two, uh, and you know, the other seniors, Quinn Briscoe was great. Uh, Brody Lindemann was good in his solid uh, first, uh, at bats for the freshmen. You know, these guys are guys who are young, making their debuts. They got to rely on guys like Tyreek and Kromkowski who played last year a bunch, and they, they they've they've just been great. They, it's good, and Coach Wiggs is happy, very happy. I'm, you know, I'm very happy. Uh, the boys are very happy. It's a good good week wrapping things out here at Belleville East, and a lot more good to come. Uh, hopefully, and these boys got a lot more to. Uh, d accomplished still, and a lot more work to put in, a lot more uh, things to do. Uh, it's gonna be, it's still, we're gonna have to play 30, 31 games, or how many we play in baseball? I forget. There's a reason why we do it, and there's gonna, you know, uh, it's good right now. Obviously, there's still more work to be done. Uh, you know, it was a great game today, nine one, five four, really, really good, and uh, just, uh, just good, good, good things from the guys, and look forward to see what, how they improve on next week. But a good week, and. Uh, right where they wanted to be, I think, honestly, after it started off, I went full. They wanted to get some wins. And they, get, they went all this week. Uh, what, undefeated week. I mean, you don't say that much. Undefeated week. And a five-game week, and you say undefeated, you know you're doing something right, for sure. All right, that will wrap it up from us here on a Saturday. We got another busy week next week. I mean, I, even though it's spring break, we did how many games? Six? Six games? Well, we got five coming for you next week. We got boys volleyball Monday. Uh, Tuesday, we're going to have – Softball, if the, if the weather will cooperate against O'Fallon, which means we need baseball weather to cooperate at Belleville West just in case things change that Thursday game because Belleville East will play West Thursday here at home. Wednesday, uh, so Tuesday home, softball against O'Fallon. Wednesday, baseball home against Salem. And then Friday we'll have some boys volleyball back in the gym to start the week and end the week against Chaminade. A look at next week. It's going to be a busy week. We're glad to have you along. It's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully the boy, the boys and girls continue to win. Softball, softball needs to get back in the win column, trying to stay undefeated in conference play. Baseball, we like to keep winning. Boys and volleyball like to continue their remarkable start, great start, and maybe make it historic next week if they can pull out two wins and be 10 and 0. Bevel East, I, I didn't get that right because I think 9 0 and 1 might be their best start. Hold on, I, I forget. It's a stat that I totally forgot about. Hold on. 2009 started 10 and 0, so no team, boys volleyball team, has started 11 and 0 yet. That's what Be Bevel East can do next week. We'll see if they can get it done next week, and hopefully our teams continue to win. Spring, it's busy. I tell tell you, it's busy. We got a busy April. Co uh, conference play begins for all three teams. It's gonna be busy. We're gonna keep you covered though over the next few weeks, next few months, and see how this goes. Let's we'll see how teams continue to win, continue to get better. But that's a look at next week. We appreciate you tuning in. To both of our games, had a lot of fun calling these two, especially when they're Lancer winners, baby. It makes things a whole lot of better. It makes that day a whole lot better, baby. 5-4, game one final, 9-1 the final in game two. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you Monday for some boys volleyball on the air at 425 for JV. Varsity to follow against Father McGinley. All right, that's it for us here on a Saturday afternoon. Beautiful Saturday as well for baseball. It was beautiful. Uh, Beautiful weather these last two days. Softball yesterday, baseball day. It's been great. So we'll see if that continues next week. Whatever. Anyway, though, appreciate everyone tuning in Saturday. Hope you have a good rest of your Saturday evening. Uh, we have a good rest of your weekend. Have a good Easter tomorrow. And uh, we will see you on uh, hopefully Monday or sometime next week. If not, we'll see you guys later. Have a good one.